England absolutely annihilate a deliberately weakened, weakened island side in one of the all-time. What was the point of that test matches? There was a tremendous advertisement for the IPL. Duckett scores the fastest ever 150 at Lord, surpassing Bradman. Does this mean 5 0 England in the Ashes or that Bradman was just weak against the 1942 Irish? Pope scores a runner ball 200. Brody gets his third Lord's bag and Tongue gets five on Daboo. A busy time for the bloke doing the Lord's Honours board. That don't impress me much. <laughs> Jack Leach is out of the Ashes with a stress fracture in his lower back. Josh Hazelwood is out of the World Test Championship final. Stokes, he says he can bowl. No, seriously, I promise I can bowl. I promise. And Warner says he'll retire after Pakistan. No, I promise. I promise I'll retire after Pakistan. India don't know who their wicketkeeper is or if their new Test jersey is just a Real Madrid home shirt. Barat Sunder Raisin is on the show from London to help us preview the World Test Championship final at the Oval on Wednesday. And Jackson Bird joins us from Sydney to tell us if you're not going to bowl 150s, you can fuck off. <laughs> My name is Ian Higgins. Sam Perry is right across the room from me. This episode is brought to you by Budgie Smuggler, budgiesmuggler.com.au for all your swimwear needs for your El Nino summer. Hats, shirts, stubby holders, everything you need. Budgiesmuggler.com. Pezza live show tickets. There are a couple available for Birmingham, for Leeds, and for one of our three London shows, greatcricketer.com forward slash live dash shows, I think it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pezza, but you've got an announcement there to make about our guests joining us on stage for the tour because we're going to be in the UK in 10 days, mate. Right now we're in Melbourne, but in 10 days' time we'll right. be in Birmingham and then we're doing Do we live have work shows. permits yet? That's another thing I've got to put on the list. I forgot about that. I think work permits are important. Okay, we're not permitted yeah. to work there yet. I don't know if we're going to get a visa to India again. Nevertheless, um, <laughs> nearly didn't went last time. Look, all right, I have an announcement. We have an announcement. Okay. A little bit of a run-up to it. So so people who follow us on the socials will have seen we made a guest announcement for these UK live shows that we're doing. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're bringing everything we got for these live shows. Uh, we kicked it off in Sydney last week. Thank you to those from Sydney who came out to the show. Mm-hmm. Tuesday night, sold out in a day, a Tuesday night in Sydney in Moore Park where there ain't much around. That's yeah. a great result. Not on the way to anything. Exactly. Except for a good time. So for those who came, enormous thanks. Sold out, great vibe. Um, thank you to Jason Crazier who came as an audience member uh, where we, we got everyone to stand up and applaud him um, for various parts of his body. But we're bringing everything. Also, thanks for Dan Christian who joined us on stage. Also, Dan. <clears throat> but we're, but we're bringing everything we've got. Like like, like please consider these live shows the um, colossal combination of whatever TGC is, whatever it is. Uh, and and we're very excited to do these shows. We're nearly sold out across all of these shows. There's a couple of tickets remaining where he goes set now. Uh, Birmingham night two. Happy to announce, uh, for those who still want to come along, we are bringing your favourite son, Ian Bell, on stage. Billy! That does are impress me much. Fucking, I mean, the, the boys are delivering. Ian Bell? So it's going to be... Um, come on. It's going to be a Monday night, sure, but it's the second night of the show, of the run. Yeah. Uh, your favourite son will be on stage. The, yes. gr- the most glorious cover drive known to man and the will be club. on stage. And the Glee Club. Yeah. Uh, uh, it, it's, it's 05 Ashes. It's worn stories. Uh, it's uh, it's everything. Yep. You know what I'm saying? He was the man of the series when they won 3-0 in 2013, I want to say. Am I premature with 05 Ashes there? No, no. Have I gone... Have I gone to... I no, mean, he no. played in 05. Yeah. <laughs> he played in 05. Oh, God. Yeah. Uh, nevertheless... Belly's on stage. There are tickets. Get involved. Yes. Night prior to that. Sorry, Glenn Maxwell's on stage with sorry. us. Sorry. But it's sold out. Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> now, the next show we're doing, Manchester, we've got Phil Salt. Now, not easy to get guests up in Manchester. What, in Phil between. Salt is fucking And we've got good. fucking Salt. Yeah. All right? Salt's just gone and um, done a fair bit of damage in Delhi on field. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. F- yeah, um, for 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 the Delhi Capitals there, a little bit of tete a tete Indeed. with uh, Mosa Raj. Yeah, uh, a, a, a man definitely on the rise. A big um, supporter of the show as well. We move on to Leeds. Sorry to bring you back to the O Five Ashes. Oh, sorry, but Steve Harmison oh, is going to join us what? on stage. 
Steve okay. Harmison? You're Harmison. talking about the Steve Harmison. Steve Harmison. The football manager. Yes. <laughs> Steve Harmison's joining us on stage. There's some tickets left to Leeds. Mm-hmm. Get around that, please. That is if a fantastic you're around the northern parts. venue as well. I think it's called City Varieties. Yes, City Varieties it Music Hall. It is a hall. sensational venue. Once again, the TJC up north. Yes. TJC invited to Headingley that day as well, yeah. FYI. Yeah. Uh, but we'll deal with that later. That's a private matter. Now... And that is the kind of that's that's the combination right. of the early parts of the tour, mm-hmm. and then we go down to London for three shows. Yeah, three of the best. Our first night, which is the third show we put on. Now, listen, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, listen. Here's, here's the announcement. Listen, I got here. Stop what you're doing. Uh, Fucking stop it. We are pl- listen. We are playing at Alexandra Palace. Okay, we're playing at Alexandra Palace. Yes, home to some pretty good acts yep. over the years. Yeah, right. And in the month of June, Elton John. Uh, I saw Lord there, yeah. and they do the darts there. Fat Boy Slim was performing a few nights before. <laughs> That's right, and I've, they, you know, <laughs> he's not the guest, by the way. <laughs> Norman Cook <laughs> is the guest, <laughs> right here, uh, right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we are pleased to announce, ladies and gentlemen, there's only there's only a handful of tickets remaining to Ali yeah, Pally. Enough, enough that you can get involved in, yeah, okay. But joining us on stage at Alexandra Palace for the first show we're doing in London. Tell them, Ricky Ponting. That is grade A top choice meat. R.T. Ponting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, now, now. <laughs> Sorry, I've stolen your intro when he walks on stage. <laughs> um, uh, I was, that's how, how Julia Gullia's, um, uh, you know, less than desirable husband at the time speaks about uh, her friend. Anyway. Um, when we had Ricky Ponting for the Boxing Day show in Melbourne, Just Gone, yeah. that was one of the funnest nights of my entire yeah. life. That was a bit of, um, uh, genuinely, that was the most charged atmosphere we yeah, have had It was at electric. Not to be confused uh, with a bar electric in Melbourne, which that, is that, more And that was AM standing thing. room stuff and people were on their feet. They were actually holding up bottles of Ponting wine. Uh huh. While it, he came on stage, it reminded me of sardines. Yeah, it, it was a little bit Douglas. Like, Douglas sardines. <laughs> <laughs> the business he started after Bodyline. He <laughs> was in competition with Bubba Shrimp Co. <laughs> Jardine sardines. Now, Ricky Ponting is going to be joining us on stage at Ali Pally. Oh I mean, my God. Uh, the boys are trying to deliver. Sorry, the boys are trying to deliver to the fans out there. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we're bringing everything we can yep. to the show in terms of whatever is in our fucked up brains. Yes. And then on stage will be Ricky Ponting. <laughs> okay, so please. Oh, my God. What a lineup that is for the Ashes Tour for TJC in 2023. Those are all the uh, those are all the tickets that are available and the guests so far. They're the guests so far. Now, for those who got tickets immediately for the 26th and 27th night to a night three, we will have announcements in due course. Um, okay, so you go to greatcricketer.com forward slash live dash shows or just go to greatcricketer.com. There's a tab at the top that says live shows. You can get your tickets there, scroll through, select your dates, bring some friends along. It's going to be You want to get those tickets amazing. ASAP, I'd imagine. I would have thought they're going to go up pretty quick. Some would say like hotcakes, not me, but other people have said that. Uh, and I'm also very excited for Ian Bell in Birmingham. Mm. Birmingham's very own. Mm. Mike Skinner not available, unfortunately. Mm. Um, but that is going to be red hot. And obviously, Harmy and Leeds, come on. Fuck, that is good. Um, okay. Pez, it's been um, – it's been th- – you want to say something? Yeah, I do. We have extended the limited edition merch window for a couple of days. This is going to close. I know I've said a couple of times it's the final time. <laughs> John, John, fun. <laughs> One more right, time. That's right. Um, no, that was Daft Punk. But – um. Nevertheless, it is closing in 48 hours, ladies and gentlemen. Get around Chop King Cologne, the Joel Wilson Institute, and all the remaining merch that we have on sale. Uh, it, the, the window will close. Get it while it's hot. Uh, it is cooling. but uh, <laughs> <laughs> Unlike the planet. Mm. Greycricketer.com. Okay, uh, I just also, just really quick before we get into 30 years since the Gatting Ball and, yeah. uh, and some chat there, which is mm. quite funny. Um, not extremely, just quite funny. Yeah, um, that's right. Disclaimer. It's obviously, on Patreon, it is heating up for uh, uh, supporters on Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash great cricketer. You sign up for five or ten dollars a month, um, and you get all the audio from all of our YouTube videos we'll be doing. Uh, if you don't watch TJ Sheet, you just listen to it. You just consume TJC through your ears, not your face eggs. 
Um, <laughs> one for the Succession fans there. And uh, and we're going to have all the daily reviews for the World Test Championship final, which obviously starts on Wednesday. And then after that, I think it's uh, there's something before the 100, but I can't remember what it is. I'm just mm. more focused on the 100 myself. And of course, hashtag RCGC Fridays, patreon.com forward slash great cricketer if you want to support TGC uh, on their tour uh, over to the UK there. All right, Pez, uh, 30 years since the Gatting Ball, and it, it is the ball of our lifetimes. Nothing will ever replace it. There have been many good balls since. There have been good, ball, good balls before. <laughs> yeah, indeed. <laughs> just want to pay my respects to other good deliveries that have been bowled. In I want cricket. to pay my respects. Yeah, that's right. Don't forget, it's inclusion. It's inclusivity. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Okay, but it's been thirty years since that ball, mm. and uh, a number of uh, great leg spinners again of our time have paid their respects to the Gatting ball and said that it was the pinnacle. It was the pinnacle of the sport. It's a pinnacle of the art of leg spin bowling. Mm. Well, I, I want to. I think I know the article you're referring to, um, but just just some personal reflections. Thirty years since the Gatting ball, like I'm, I'm not going to be invited to discuss it without getting flowery about it, right? Like I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm not gonna side mouth something so sacred. Uh, like, I would have used my feet myself, but <laughs> everyone has their own proclivities. But it, like the the Gatting ball was. To have an audience with perfection, he mm-hmm. goes. Uh, like I, and I, I was thinking about it as, as is you know my and our want thirty years on, and I remember where I was when I saw it on TV. Really, right? Well, but now I'm going to get into the details of it. I remember where I was when I saw it on TV. Like I was, I was um, at my. We were living in Ride, uh, and I was on my knees. Uh, in front of the TV, <laughs> but very close to it. So, like, I was um, I was seven years old. Mm-hmm. And so I was thinking, okay, if I was seven years old, then is it possible that I watched it live? And I, I went to read um, Mark Selvey from The Guardian's match report or report from the day. From 1993. From 1993. And uh, – he noticed that, like, Australia started the day batting. They were 242 for five. England uh, got, knocked him over for 289, uh, and then they added 71 for the first wicket uh, uh, against against the new ball. And so there's zero chance I was watching it live. I was seven years old. I would have been asleep. But I'm, it must have been the next day. But I, I do I do genuinely remember seeing it. And I just it, – it was so – like it's so etched in the memory, like, and it it takes on like a um, a sepia toned heavenly kind of quality, mm-hmm. like the the four X on the shirt, yep. the long sleeves, yep. the blonde hair, uh, and when he like now you start to try and find things in it that you haven't seen before, and like one for me I want to raise is maybe it's a bit X's and O's, but like the way he's a right leg powers through the delivery at the same time, it it um curves around in torque, you know, to the left, just as the ball's drifting to the right, almost like creating its own bamboozling kind of quality uh, at that time. That's one thing I remember. Then I read this Crick Info article and some other articles through the week. They've got some reflections from Ian Healy, or from Mike Gadding about Ian Healy, and he notes that Healy actually goes down the leg side thinking it's going to go straight. Like, that's how much drift there was. He just thought it was going to go that way. And it snaps and goes the other way and takes you off bail. And then Gatting also says, as he was trying to work out what was going on, Ian Healy told him to leave the crease. And then he said, and as I was still figuring out what was going on, he asked me again to leave the crease. Now, I'd really love to know, you know, verbatim <laughs> yeah. what was said so we can add it to the uh, the mythology sure, yeah, of yeah. this delivery because I don't think it would have been please leave the crease. Well, ironically, 30 years later, Ian Hill is giving a sweeping masterclass in front of a <laughs> dustbin and he would have been doing the same thing to Mike Gatting <laughs> about what, how to play that delivery. So, like, the effect of the ball on a seven-year-old, like, as you're starting to awake to your love of cricket, it's – one of the most monumental gifts you can receive and gifts now. Uh, what, a, what a piece of luck. And then so in this Crick Info article there, it's not like an oral history. So they're, they're just asking uh, leg spinners of all, um, you know, through, through the ages, I suppose. So yes. you, you have uh, Mushtaq Ahmed, you have Anil Kumble, mm-hmm. you have Alana King from Australia, and you have 
Piyush Chawla, yeah, the in, uh, the the Mumbai Indians and Indian stalwart who had a great uh, IPL this a year, great IPL for, for the MI. Mumbai Indians. Yeah. It's just one thing st- 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 like stood out to me yeah. from Chawla's remarks yeah. was um this is his quote yeah. uh, and he 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 just says among other things he says I was fourteen or fifteen when I saw it. <laughs> That just stuck out to me. I was like fourteen or fifteen because I remember how old I was. Thirty years ago, I was like I was, I was seven. Yeah, and uh, so if he was, he, this is his quote: "I was fourteen or 15. So that means he was born in nineteen seventy nine. <laughs> Quick right. little good. I'm like, gee, that's he's yeah. really doing well to be playing yeah. a good season for Mumbai Indians. Forty five years Quick old. Quick check of the old Google. Yeah, thirty four. Yeah. So. Is he 45 or is he 34? <laughs> like, it's not one of those ones where it's like, ah, oh, yeah. easy mistake to make. Yeah. I've just given myself 11 years <laughs> accidentally. Was I about to drive or barely yeah. walking? This, now, this is, this is the, um, you know, reputable establishment of Crick Info. There, there, is, there is journalistic integrity there. Sure. That, that's in that's in quotes. Yeah. That's, that's you in don't, print. You don't, you don't mistakenly say you were 14 or 15 when you were four. You know, really? think, think about when you were 14 and things you were doing at 14 or yeah. 15, things you're exploring, yeah. first times for things. Yeah. You don't you don't go like, was I four then? Or was, <laughs> was I was I drinking in a park with my friends or is it one of my earliest ever memories? <laughs> Which one of those is those? Was I looking at a condom and, and blowing it up as a balloon or putting it over my penis? <laughs> it was like and mum was finding it and going, what are you doing? You go, oh, I'm just using them as balloons. I was four. Play that oh, game. Wait. Play the game where you're smashing it around with the siblings so it doesn't touch the floor. <laughs> Over furniture, diving around tables. So it just stuck out to me. Just a little like, well, how old's Chawla? Yeah. I mean, there's like that's the message coming. Once Few again, questions. In, once again, India yeah. taking over the the, the, the yeah. story. Yeah. 30 years since Gatting, mm. for me, mm. the takeaway is how old is Chawla? <laughs> that's all. England and Ireland. I want to start this uh, uh, this yep. this uh, this review of this fine Test match. Test Hurst. match at Lords. Start of the English except, summer. You know what? I fucking love cricket in England. You've I lo- said, love it. Always said that. I fucking love it. This few questions, mm. and I want to start off with an Ask TDC from a non who dropped an email in, mm. and he said, "How do these cunts get to play at Lords and shit?" <laughs> They bowl fucking backwards Christmas presents. I'm talking about Ireland, of course. I'm not sure why watching this underfunded 3.01% of the ISIS head revenue distribution model makes me so angry. I'm not sure if it's the years in grade cricket or if I'm just insecure with how my own career played out. But seeing the bottom right of the screen come up with 123 kilometres an hour makes me visibly angry. <laughs> they shouldn't be allowed on the TV bowling that backwards shit. Chess, pipes, 140s or fuck off. Cheers, Anon. Let me give a review of the game. Ireland hit 172. Brody took 5 for 51. Leach took 3 for 35. Uh, England hit 524 for 4 off 82 overs. Pope hit 205 of 208. Duck at 182 of 178. Crawley 56. He'll play forever. And Root 56 going past 11,000 of your test match runs. Thank you very much. He is now 11th all-time on the test match runs list route. He's about 180, something like that for behind Alan Border, so he'll pass out in the ashes. Ireland's then hit 362, thanks to Andy McBrien. Hit 86 red, and Mark Adair hit 88. Josh Tung took five for 66. England then chased the 11 runs required in four balls, with Zach Crawley hitting three fours in the first over of absolute fucking dross. <laughs> That's what happened in the game. Yeah. Now, I want to start, Pez with a conversation about what the fuck this was. And uh, and also, this for me was a real uh, like um, a real marker of test cricket and what the point of it is for Associate Nations. So Josh Little is by far England's best bowler. He Ireland. Mo- Sorry, it's Ireland's okay. best bowler. Maybe England's. Um, and uh, he would have played in this game. Uh, I think Paul Sterling might have the uh, one of the nod for best player. He's been fantastic for Ireland over the years, but Josh, Josh Little, like he, Josh Little, just played in the IPL. He played in for the Gujarat Titans. He played in the uh, what was ultimately the second best team in the tournament, though mm-hmm. they finished top of the table. Uh, he played he commanded a spot in that. It wasn't he any was, kind of bench warming. No, he he played the impact player. Mm-hmm. Um, he bowled four overs per game. He decided not to play. Uh, and I'm going to quote Ireland's performance director here, Richard Holdsworth, who said, "We are incredibly proud to play at Lords, 
but it's not a pinnacle event. Mm-hmm. Going to a World Cup qualifier where only 10 teams, two from the qualifier, can qualify for that World Cup, that is still the biggest prize in the game so far as we're concerned, and certainly as far as the world game is concerned. Now, Andy Balburnie, Ireland's captain, talking to ESPN Crick Info, said this. It's pre-game, pre-game, yeah. I'd say there are people who are not happy with that. That's uh, Josh Little not playing. There are a lot of people at Lords, and there won't be a lot of people in Zimbabwe or Scotland for the uh, qualifiers which they're about to em- embark on Ireland. And Lords, for an Irish supporter, is fairy tale stuff. People in Ireland, I think, got their love of cricket from listening to Test Match Special and watching cricket on Channel 4, like myself, in the 90s and early 2000s. It was always England tests, and now we're the team playing on TMS. If you're an Irish cricket fan, you're like, this is amazing, this is dreamland stuff. So naturally, you'd be like, why aren't we playing our best team when they're not injured? But there's a bigger picture. We understand that the qualifiers are where we need to be at our best. There's probably a few moans and groans uh, about it. But I think for us and for Josh, it's the best thing. Absolutely incredible. And uh, I see absolutely no issue with Josh Little being rested after just playing in the IPL for not playing this essentially an exhibition game um, when they are about to embark on uh, World Cup qualifiers in Zimbabwe uh, where – Basically, two teams from those qualifiers of 10, I think it is, um, get the chance to play in the World Cup in India. That is the pinnacle of the sport for them, which will grow the game enormously rather than um, trying to beat England at Lords here, which is I know I know is remarkable for a lot of people, but um, I don't know. Uh, that's just the way it is, and I fully support that. Oh, it, like don't hate the player, hate the game, surely. Um, yeah. I mean, if, if, if Ireland had uh, structural incentives um, which made Lords the – the pinnacle of the sport, yeah, and that's the that's the sort of poetry and romance and symbolism sitting underneath this issue. Yeah, it's like, oh well, hang on, you get a game at Lords against England, and that's not even the most important thing anymore. Like, mm-hmm. I think that's what's jarring for yeah. a lot of people. Yeah, uh, why would Ireland lie about this? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. one of those things. Yeah. So, I don't think I don't think any criticism of Ireland is warranted. It's it it is it's a sad thing, really. I mean, I think Ireland would probably be. Sad about that being the situation as well. I, it occurs to me that, like like Andy Balburnie was saying, their um, connection to cricket is probably very uh, driven by the kind of test matches they would have seen at Lords played by England. You know, on stuff on BBC, all that sort of shit. As, he, as he's saying, all that sort of shit. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> we got an announcement about that stuff soon. But anyway, um, and uh, but, but yeah, the the cr- cricket is funded and driven differently now. Mm. Uh, and you know, I'd like, and and then yeah, like that's uh, that then leads back to what Anon said at the start, like um, you know, like uh, yeah. <laughs> and by the way, you know, like people actually saying that when they're you know when something goes bad, that it doesn't matter. Uh, like we've seen England players do that. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. um, you know, yeah. if anyone's like criticizing Ireland on that in that respect, they should probably check themselves. But like, what well, I mean, what if what if like. I see what the, I see what Anon was saying as well about oh, the one twenty three stuff. Yeah. Like you, you look at it and you have a you have physical symptoms. You yeah. think about going to see a doctor about uh, after seeing one twenty three Ks mm. on screen. Mm. Like it, th- this is the affliction of a Sydney grade cricketer in the mid two thousands. Of course, yeah, isn't it? Like um, you know, like somehow somewhere it made itself into the discourse back then that Sydney grade cricket, possibly from the mid nineties, was you know the the most elite amateur sporting competition ever recorded yeah, across yeah, yeah. all sports that was in the pinnacle. history. That was the pinnacle. That, that, that's what we all were led to believe. We believed ourselves. Uh, and, like, you know, part of the corollary to that was that you would get upset at anybody at any other uh, any level higher than you showing yeah, yeah, yeah. any weakness in cricket. Yeah, yeah. That include other test match nations. Oh, yeah. Because like, Australia at the time was Space Jam. So mm. they were they were gods. Mm. Nobody could go with them apart from our second team. Yeah, that's right? right. That's right. That's right. And that gave you a right to regard anybody else who wasn't a test player for Australia as a, a or a state player yeah. as like a limp wristed beta cuck. Oh, enormously. including test players. Oh, including other sports. Yeah, ex- yeah, exactly. Like because you played threes and fours. That's right. In Sydney. If I'm watching, like, women's tennis, yep. I'd be like, um, I played a bit of second grade, yeah. so I think I could uh, yeah. win the crown. Yes, yeah. thank you. Yeah. And come <laughs> to think of it, it was probably a 
It was probably a very, instead, it was probably a very good retention program from Cricket New South Wales just mm. to keep blokes interested in playing cricket. Like, yeah. look, we can't pay you. You have to pay mm. to be part of this. And we know right now there's a big mining boom going on in WA. Of course. And a lot of you will be tempted to go and uh, adopt the FIFO lifestyle. Mm. So in order to keep you at your, you know, Randwick Petersham's yep. uh, and your Northern Districts mm -hmm. uh, and your Campbelltown Camdens, yes. et cetera, uh, clubs like that, yeah. we, we need you to believe that you are taking part in one of the most elite competitions of all time. Yes. We all bowled 115s, mate. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's 120s early. Yeah. yeah. But there was a big and, – and so to this guy who's like, what's happened to me? Mm. Like, that's what happened to you, brother. Yeah. And for the rest of your life, nothing will be good. Nothing's allowed to be yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, mean, it was pretty pumped. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Uh, it uh, was pretty pumped. Um, also uh, – Some notes on the game? You, you, well, you I was just, just going to say, just, just to cap that off. So they've just played – on, on the beginning of this year, they've played a test match against Sri Lanka – and someone else who I can't think of, but I apologise. <laughs> One of the other teams. And before then, none of the Irish players had played a first-class game for four years. <laughs> so what's the point of playing a test match when there is no there is no, Washington there, General there is no future in test match cricket for Associate Nations? There is no, there's barely a future for um, fully-fledged test match nations. But maybe if they get the money for the white ball cricket, oh, then yeah. they get enough money, they need, then they'll have the money for the They need more the opportunities to play some red ball. When the fuck is that going to happen? Mm. It's it's dead. It's gone. Anyway, England are now 13 played, 11 wins yeah. uh, under the new regime. Not sure if you've heard about it. It is um, it is it is fucking incredible. It, it, it's incredible batting. The bowling is very good. Broad takes five for obviously Leach three for again. Uh, we'll obviously talk about Leach a little bit later. But um, uh, and then Josh Tung comes in and takes five for sixty six. Pez, I'm going to throw it out to you, Pez. Um, Josh Tung <laughs> five for sixty six. Okay. They they they've liked him for a while. He's done good things at Worcestershire. Uh, I think he debuted in 2017. They got promoted from the Division Two yeah, County yeah. Championship, which okay. is basically fours. Uh, I had a look at it and uh, and I thought, hmm. That don't impress me much. Now, it seems to me that the the He's Ashes got five, got five for on debut at Lords. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It looked once again. Oh, now I'm going to say it. It looked pump to me. It looked pump. <laughs> now the Ashes is going to be a squad game. We know that. Not, not basically, no one can play anymore. Uh, no one knows if anyone can bowl more than four overs um, <laughs> at a time. It's it's going to be who's going to rotate through the squads. Obviously, the bowlers are going to have a heavy workload, et cetera, et cetera. They give Josh Tung this game, I'm sure, to get him a test match berth before getting into the Ashes. He's also in the test squad for the first two tests, though that will change, obviously, because now Leach is out. Um, we don't know about Stokes being fit to bowl. He says he's okay. But, um, but uh, yeah, that was, um, that was my takeaway. It don't impress <laughs> me much. That's how I feel about the whole game, really. I got, yeah, I got a couple of notes on the game as well. I mean, you, you said some scores and a mm. couple. No doubt, there's been some analysis of, of what we were saying. Yeah, mm. batting um, records everywhere. Yeah, like every t since Stokes and McCullum have taken over, every time I turn this shit on, mm. th there's something outrageous on the screen in yeah. terms of the numbers that I'm seeing. You have to compute it for a second. It is. It's remarkable mm. now, and like it's it's fucking remarkable. Yeah, it's remarkable. It's, like people don't know what to say. Mm. They don't know. You can tell in England, like people are still afraid in England and yeah. whatever. But like something, it's it's highly likely something quite spectacular is happening, and and yet, you know, and it like it's it's surreal. <laughs> it's surreal. The nuts like, oh, duck it, one sixty eight. Yeah, England's fucking five hundred. End of the day, they they're going to six and a half. No one's ever done that. They've done that once ever or something. You know when it, you know when Australia played away plays away from home and the scores backwards and the, mm. and, and the scores like two for seven. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. you think and, and you think you like, take a while. hang on, yeah. hang on a sec. What the what, what am I looking at here? Like, are they are those seven wickets? Yeah. Like, and like. And the, yeah, like, and still every time, like, as an Australian, like, we have an excuse, you know. It's like, it's like, oh, I did it against the Kiwis, <laughs> you know. Did it against India, <laughs> don't care. Well, One off yeah, IPL, yeah, 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 yeah. they just make it yeah, okay. so jolly. Uh, against you know, do it against South Africa, <laughs> don't play anymore. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, do it against Ireland. <laughs> what? what mm -hmm. a, yeah, they don't even they don't even want to play in this. Yeah. Uh, and like, I think that's what's going to make this Ashes so good. Mm. I really. I, like Australia is just not ready for what these coats can actually do. Well, the Australian public's not. Oh yeah, sorry. By Australia, I mean the public. Yeah, sure, yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the polis, if you will. <laughs> I know you will. Uh, so 
I, I, I am. Um, I'm never going to say I'm scared. Yeah, because I'm Australian. What the, like, what I want to know, oh, like, what what are these cunts about to do? This could mean everything for the Republic and the, and the future of the monarchy. Like, if, if England beat us five now, we might be destined to support the monarchy forever. Well, this is this is the future. That's big stakes. <laughs> That's very big stakes. <laughs> I, I really, I do think Australia's not mm. ready because we're watching the Ds, right? That's yeah. a fact. Yeah. Uh, I think this is the, like, for me, it's the best part of what the Ashes is going to be is, uh, I think, like, like C- Cummins, who is a dark horse alpha that yes. has managed – I'm not saying he's hiding from it, yep. but he has a lot more alpha, a lot more outward alpha than uh, you see. Yes, that's, that's, that is true. Right? And, I, and I say it uh, kind of affectionately. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I feel safe with it, really. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, run into, you run into him, you have a chat, he'll, he'll, he'll fucking mouth you off in the first five seconds with something. <laughs> yeah. You know, okay, you stung me there. Yeah. You're younger <laughs> than me. Anyway, um, <laughs> and then – you got the bush horse, so I'll back all day, yeah. right? And then you got and you got Stark, um, Scott Boland, and I, I think they'll know what's coming, and I don't think they will take too kindly to being like embarrassed, you know, to being knocked around the way these guys are setting up to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, I just want a couple other notes on this game. Is that okay? With, yeah, of course. Before we move on, yeah. yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Like absolute solidarity with Ireland on all things, like and that emanates from family and stuff like that. Uh, for me, mm. um, general demeanor of Irish people, mm, the Nile, Nile O'Brien, <clears throat> etc. Yep. Um, Ireland blue lids in Test cricket, massive waste. Right. I see, I see that royal blue, uh, the, the the navy, uh, like is yeah, it, so yeah. I, 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 to me, that's private school stuff. It's posh. Yep. I don't think Ireland – like, Ireland should embrace the an emerald green lid. Absolutely. Uh, no question. I don't – it makes me wonder if cricket is a, like, a posh preserve in Ireland a little bit. Would if make sense. If they're trying to kind of ape an England colour. Right. Don't do that. Yeah. I don't want that, mm. right? Just the, just the, that's just a kit um, yeah, thing. Enough. Just on kits, uh, England uh, – England wearing bucket caps now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, Stokesy trying to – Trying to, uh, you know, do the aftermatch presentation in, in his bucket cap. I uh, yeah. had to get Roots cap, you know, like the medium, like kind of <laughs> sorted out. But like, uh, you know, I like. You're sounding rattled, mate. Oh, I just think that the team is, um, they're just so at pains to show us how relaxed they are. You know what mm, I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I know when I'm relaxed, yeah. I'm always keen to let people know how relaxed I am yeah. through my. Um, you know, language forms, features, and structures. Uh, of course, and, and, and my out, my outerwear. Yeah. Um. So just a little note on that. Just got the bucket caps going. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. Josh Tung, uh, new name. Some trappings for the eyes. Has a thick trunk. He falls away a bit. I don't really trust it. Yeah. They're my thoughts on Josh. Yeah. Um. Who took five for on debut at Lords. That's right. And he's on the honours board for the rest of his life. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he has to he has, actually has, has to deal with those thoughts. Yeah, but twos, we threes. feel it's a bit county twos. Uh, finally, just to start the English summer a bit, like speaking of trappings, um, I want to shout out to Sky Sports Cricket coverage, right? I managed, like I, I caught a bit of the game, I caught a bit of like pre-match stuff and lunch stuff. Um, mate, like, I'm sorry, and this is a bit vulnerable of me, but I'm kissing teeth with this sort of stuff. Like, um, I, very few things, <laughs> like I, I get around few things more than, a bit of like suave ex England cricket gentry. Um, <laughs> wait, yeah. let me get the <laughs> parameters right. Yeah, where where the chassis is still in order. Yeah, it's a nice chassis. It's English gentry. Yep. It's a press chino, at least five hundred pound British made leather wheel. Yeah, uh, you know a, a Grenson or a Crockett and Jones number. Mm-hmm. Um, a grey blazer with a generous thread count, mm-hmm. uh, well fitted with time piece protruding just so. Right. Uh, a soft early summer light. Yep. And discussion pitched at the discerning viewer. You know, that is hot for me. Like that's, for me, that's male equivalent of like Bridget Jones's diary stuff, me in the bath with a glass of red. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm, I, you, you may laugh. There will be a lot of people nodding and also touching themselves. Athens, <laughs> Butch, you know, and Kumar Sangakara. Mate, I, you know, you know what I'm saying. Like, it's the yeah. glint. You can laugh, but like at at home, we get we get fucking 
you know, we get TikTok segments. Yeah, that's right. You know? Yeah, yeah. These yeah. guys, they're chatting to journalists before play. Athers is holding a broadsheet, hard copy Guardian with his own notes that you can see his his glasses just falling off the eyes, yeah. just looking <laughs> over the top. I feel, you know, with everything, with, with Manoj Badar's comments. Yeah. Rajasthan Royals owner. Right, right, right. I see that and I think that is a good soft power play for cricket uh-huh. for maybe 1,000 people. <laughs> but but those, those people, yeah. are, but I'm, it's hot shit. I can't yeah. wait to get into that. There you go. Stokes says he's fit to bowl. He says, and I quote, I bowled this morning, day three of the Island Test match, of course. Uh, The first time I'd bowled since being back from India. So it would have been about four weeks, actually. I got through that and was really happy with where I was. So no, nothing for England fans to worry about. He also took a catch and almost uh, limped off the field. Uh, I'm very sceptical, but hey. He looks very relaxed. He's wearing a bucket hat, and I'm into that because I like Oasis. For, um, for a bloke who hasn't bowled uh, it, like in ages, he keeps saying he can bowl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but David Saker watched him warm up, so and David Saker said it was good. So, Well, sounds good to me, mate. Can I give you the squad for the Ashes, the two Ashes test matches? Oh, this, please. Okay, so it's Stokes who's going to captain. I believe it's pronounced James Anderson. Bairstow, Broad, Harry Brook, Crawley, Duckett, Dan Lawrence, Jack Leach, Pope, Potts, Robinson, Joe Roots, Josh Tung, Chris Wokes, Mark Wood. Obviously, I said Jack Leach in there, who is overnight um, being uh, – he, he's pulled out of the Ashes series because he's got a stress fracture in his back because he's been bowling wheels. Uh, it's always a, you know, uh, a mark of a good, uh, a good quick having stressies. So Jack Leach is out. Pez. Jack Leach is out of the Ashes. There is no reserve spinner in their squad. Dan Lawrence, I suppose, bowls some offies. He's a reserve batter. So it leaves a question as to who the fuck is going to bowl for England. Are, are they going to go nine seamers now? Mm. I think it's like either way, whatever happens, whoever comes into the side, it's going to strengthen their batting just slightly because it is a long tail at the moment, although the team will change every game because there's too many games and too many days and no one plays test cricket anymore. So um, Jack Leach, though, mate, that is uh, that's significant. He's bowled, I would, I'm guessing, but he would have bowled the most overs under the uh, Brendan McCullen, um, Ben Stokes era. He has taken tenfers. He was nearly the leading wicket taker in Test match cricket last year. He's been fantastic in the last year. Um, him not being able to play um, poses enormous questions. Now your your replacements are likely to be uh, Will Jacks played in uh, in no, who am I thinking of? Yeah, Will Jacks played. He's got Mo and Ali. Uh, Rehan Ahmed played in Pakistan, of course. Um, Joe Root uh, is, for me, Joe Root seems to me the most likely that they will play as the spinner and they'll play uh, four seamers. Um, but they've got seven seamers in their squad, in the squad for the first two test matches. Um, <laughs> that's going to put a lot of stress on those quicks. Uh, I don't know if anyone's going to come in to, pl- to play the spinning role. I mean, uh, I think uh, Stru- um, Joe Root, rather for me, seems to be the safest, steadiest option. But that's obviously, of course, not in any way how England have gone about it in the past year. So what the fuck do I know? But it is interesting, though. It is interesting without Jack Leach. That is that is genuinely a loss. I think it's big. Uh, he's, a, he's one of only like four or five guys that have been in every basketball team. Right, okay. Uh, and that just underscores how pivotal he is to the way they play cricket. And... Yeah, I, like I, I wouldn't, yeah, underrate this loss for England because it, it what, what's like really interesting to me is like ba- baseball is this, um, you know, revolutionary style of cricket, like zealously pursued that is ho- that is like based in thinking about cricket differently, like basically challenging norms of the game uh, that that we take to be sacred and undiscussable, especially mm-hmm. in Australia. <clears throat> um. And the way that team actually connects is by its most traditional functional player. Like the role he plays in permitting England to play that way is like just can't be understated. He bowls the most overs, as you said, and the way he bowls is to hold up an end. And I, I don't know, like as far as I can intone or observe, like listening to cr- test cricket insiders, you know, that 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 bowler who can you can um, rely upon to – hold up an end to go at two and over, two and a half and over. And he's been able to do this in England uh, since Baz- like Brendan McCollum took over. Uh, has all of these like compounding effects. You know, not only do you slow the run rate, but then all of your quicks who are coming in to get wickets. And like, that's how Stokes wants to play. He wants guys to come in and take wickets. J- Jimmy Anderson, I believe it's pronounced Jimmy. Mm. Um, 
he speaks like that as well. His strike rate's gone down from like 56 to 42 or something. Guys can come on, you know, um, uh, you know they, they're, they're unleashed. And a lot of that is because of the pressure that Jack Leach can build up. Now, uh, so for me, like – What's obviously going to happen is that by the time we publish this, they will have announced a replacement and That's it will right. be nobody that we have mentioned. Mm-hmm. But I'll, like, I'll be curious to see if Brendan McCullum actually goes for a like-for-like like replacement, you know, goes for somebody that is like, you know, can get him 20 overs a day so that the other guys can do their thing. Uh, so for me, like, like I, I think Liam Dawson was mentioned as well. He's a left-arm orthodox spinner who has played test cricket and is experienced. But... You know, I th- think the Aussies were probably going to try and go after Jack Leach anyway. Because yeah. if, if you prize him open mm. like they did at the Gabba, mm-hmm. then you're getting more overs into the legs and, you know, and whatever. And, and England already seem to be, like, uh, injured. <laughs> like, their fast fast one court, you know, um, mm. team seems to – like, Cabal seems to be, like, either old or kind of injury prone. Mm-hmm. Uh, or, like, in the case of Mark Wood, you know, like um, – you can't play too many games in a row. Mm. So to pick more of them in one go, is, oh, I feel like it's a huge risk. And then to ask your best batter and Joe Root to mm. to then hold up an end as well, like to, to go, he goes into the nets at Edge Baston, like leading into the game. He's like, mate, you got to you got to you got to bowl for a couple of hours now as well. Mm. Get yourself right. Get your fields right. I you know I, I think I think it's a really big loss. And just just a shout out to Jack Leach who is so has been so unlucky. You know has um has uh, gone through Crohn's disease, uh, has, um, has you know, injured himself fielding for balls. It yeah. seems that every time things are about to go right for him, as they have since, you know, McCullum came in, especially he's taken tenfers, mm. uh, you know, something like this happens. So I feel sorry for him. Uh, mm. And, and I, think, I think the series, you know, suffers as a result as well. One of the, uh, <clears throat> one of the injuries you mentioned there was like he, he, he concussed himself in a game last year at Lords and uh, when he was diving for a ball, didn't he? And then Matt Parkinson came in as the first mm. ever concussion substitute in Test Match Cricket, I think it was, mm. and he played his one and only Test Match. I don't think he's in the frame. Um, he's, he's not getting picked for his county at the moment. Seems unlikely then. Yeah. Um, so uh, I, I guess it's, uh, it's interesting. I was Mo and Ali retired from Test Match Cricket a year ago. Uh, I, he's just won the IPL with uh, the Chennai Super Kings, uh, but he is not playing any red ball cricket. I'd be surprised if he wants to go around one more time. He also, he also has a very poor record against Australia, though most of that is in Australia, to be fair. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a huge dilemma for them. Um, but as I said before, they're, they're the same as are Anderson, Broad, Robinson, Tongue, Wokes, Wood, mm. Potts. Um, Potts obviously got, him back, got himself back into the side. He was, he was out of the side for about uh, well, the best part of a year, I think, um, it's just that variety of spinner brings as well, though. Mm. You know, like it's like someone who comes on is bowling slower, different angles and stuff, like breaking up the rhythm of the batter. If you go in with all seam and they want to have a fast and flat, like well, uh, it was flat scenario. at Lords as well. It was flat. Yeah. I mean, Ireland in that second innings hit three hundred and sixty-two um, with their numbers seven and eight or six mm. and seven hitting uh, both inning eighties, uh, and it looked very flat. And that's obviously the way that um, Stokes has said that he wants wickets to be prepared, mm. uh, which is always nice to have the captain um, telling the ground staff how to make wickets. But um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's um, it's uh, it, it does seem quite a loss in that end uh, to that end. Pez, let's talk about the World Test Championship final. Oh yeah. Um, now Josh Hazelwood said two days ago, my fitness is pretty good. It's just a matter of ticking off every session from here until that date, basically. In T20, you're bowling a lot of various different balls every over, a wide yorker to a bouncer to a slow ball, and the side that's obviously uh, has, has had him injured just got jammed up a little bit and a bit of scar tissue from previous injuries flared up. It calmed down pretty quickly. I had a week off. I didn't get... To uh, I didn't quite get back to going 100% at the IPL, but the last few bowls have been good and I've been, and I've been building up nicely. Now, since he said that, about uh, 15 minutes later, he is out of the World Test Championship squad. Uh, Michael Nisa comes in to replace him. Now, we had Alex Malcolm on the show last week, and if you follow our socials, you would have seen the clip up that we had last week. And Hazelwood has not played – Alex said last week on the show that uh, Hazelwood has not played back-to-back test matches since the Border Gavaska series of 2021 when he played, would have played at the SCG and he played at the Gabba. Uh, that was in January 2021. Since then, multiple injuries, barely played uh, test match cricket at all. Um, and uh, and this does seem like another blow, though, uh, 
you know, the optimist in me says that they are resting him for the Ashes, but I suspect that he, if he plays three test matches in the Ashes, that would be pretty good going, I suspect. Uh, now, as I said before, this just seems to be a squad game because, uh, you know, England's going to have their issues now, especially with Leach out. But, uh, I mean, Cummins didn't play in the IPL specifically, I think, to play these six test matches. If he gets through six test matches, that's going to be a fucking amazing effort. Stark is uh, typically quite an expensive bowler and the way that England play with their uh, with their Baz ball and whatnot, especially the whatnot, uh, I think that England would be... Uh, We'd be, we'd be having a look at Stark to try and take him down. If that does happen, Stark only played one test match four years ago. Uh, as he said on the show a couple of weeks ago, yeah, just retained the earned, one and done, got out of there. But uh, it leads a lot of pressure if Hazelwood's not going to be able to play too many test matches, Cummins playing all six, and then you've got Nisa and Boland, essentially. Uh, and then Cam Green, who's never really bowled like 15 overs in innings, almost a game. Um, has oh. been has been playing in the IPL, so uh, I don't know. Sounds like there's going to be some short innings on both sides. If both sides are <laughs> fucked. We're over there. So, so if you've like, got day five gonna, tickets. Yeah, who's gonna, <laughs> is anyone going to get a game? Yeah, it's like, yeah, squad game stuff. Uh, overcrowded schedule. Mm. Now the games will be over in a couple of days. You got to remember that they want to play golf as well. You have to uh, play golf in. to relax. Obviously, I feel really relaxed after golf when I fucking have a terrible round. <laughs> and I don't want to kill myself, but um, when I turn up, you know, on the front nine. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what are we what are we going to be seeing here? He goes like mm. you know third game, Marnus seam up with with Cam Green <laughs> opening the bowling. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like Smith a, first change with his yeah, leggies. That's right. Just duck it bowl for England. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like, like is, is is this where we're going to? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't. You know, it just seems like yeah. Like we're just leading into the test matches. There's heaps of test matches in not a lot of time. Mm-hmm. Guys' bodies are hard to. Uh, get together and there's going to be replacements. So heaps of people are going to get a game and Michael Nisa will bat, you know, five and six and uh, mm. over the bowling and, you mm-hmm. know, that's all That's all good. I don't know. I can see by the fifth test match they've just got the wanger and they're just, yeah, having, just, those, yeah. just having the Stokes of six hitting, six, six hitting contests. That's a great – Michael DiVinotto on the wanger. Yep. You know, he used to coach Surrey, get him out there. Yeah, and it's just, yeah, Australia's in trouble then. Yeah. Australia's in big trouble. Um, Dave Warner has said that he will retire at the end of the Pakistan series, which is obviously the one we're all looking forward to in the Australian summer. Uh, Let me give you the quotes. He said, I've always said the 2024 T20 World Cup will be my final game. That is next year in the West Indies and the USA. Um, uh, If I can score runs here, the UK that is, continue to play back in Australia, I can definitely say I won't be playing that West Indies Test Series if I get through this and I can make the Pakistan Series, I'll definitely finish up then. The last Test Match of the Pakistan Series is at the SCG for the New Year's Test Match, obviously a home game for Dave. Uh, I want to play that T... I want to play that 2024 World Cup, uh, Warner said. It's something at the back end of my mind. We've got a lot of cricket before that, and then I think it stops from February. For me, then I have to play the IPL, some of the other franchise leagues, and then get into rhythm to play that in June. Will be a bit of cricket around to play. Uh, Warner also got hit in the nets uh, this week in the elbow, and he said, I remember in 2013, I was in the nets copying it left, right, and centre in the media about getting bowled by Mitchell Stark and all the other guys and how I wasn't in form in the nets. I found that a bit bizarre because I'm probably one of the worst netters going around, but here... I've actually been superb in terms of how my feet have been moving. My energy's been moving. I've been up and about. Oh. I'm probably batting better than I ever have in the nets. Oh, well, Pez. Well, Pez. You hitting know what? Them well in the nets. He's hitting well in the nets. He's hitting them well in the nets. What does that mean for Team India? <laughs> See, I like that the rest of the like world media has focused on him um, announcing his own retirement date. Yeah. But for TJC, it's like, oh, having a good net. Having a net. Oh, must be nice. Is the ball going quickly from your bat into the side net? <laughs> Even though he didn't quite get it, but it looks like he did. Funny, isn't it, with the, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'd like to retire at the, uh, at the SCG. Like, I'd like to have my swan song. I'd like light. to have a victory lap in the in the setting sun of yeah. the SCG. Now, all right, I think it's important to lay a few things out. Like, benefit of the doubt, benefit of the doubt to him. Yeah. Uh, he says... Because people are interpreting this as you know as a as a, a, a way of keeping his please don't drop me spot. daddy yeah but like he does start the sentence by saying if I can score runs here seems okay. fairly important I just feel caveat. like feel like it should be pointed out yeah. that he puts his own caveat in yeah I need to score runs yeah so if you accept that he has scored runs mm. then. The comment is completely valid. Mate, in fact, I, think, I hope that's what happens. I think if he scores runs, I think mm. he sh- they should keep picking him. Yeah. So, And if he, he doesn't... Even he says that. <laughs> what would have been a great quote would have been, if I don't score runs, I'd like to retire. 
<laughs> that, that, that would have been, been quite, that would have yeah. been newsworthy. Yeah, that would have been sick, actually. Yeah. Um, so I think the sentiment from him is fair enough. I think the interesting part of him, like it, the, what's interesting about it is is choosing to say it now when there's you know in the absence of many other things to talk about with the Australian side because they seem sort of scarily organised mm-hmm. uh, is like you know there's been chat about Warner's place in the side. And uh, I think if you're 35 or whatever, then there's always going to be. Um, is like do, he's con- he's made a calculation to say this in the media. Uh, y- you wouldn't say that, I think, unless you were trying to mobilise something, you know, within the the public and within like you make a calculation that there is something to mobilise. I think he misreads the political capital that he has to um, to drive you know, the idea that we should send him out at the SCG, like with the swan song, mm, mm. like a groundswell of support. Yeah, like, like, like if, like if Steve Waugh had said something like that at the time, there mm. would have been like, man, Tuggy, you, let's, let's carry this cunt all the way. Well, he would you have know, said it in the trenches at Gallipoli. Well, that's a good point. <laughs> slouch hat. <laughs> with a slouch yeah, hat. That's right. And that, that's why he was a genius. <laughs> but um, yeah. like if Warner nicks off to broad, or mm. if Warner nicks off to Mo Shammy and then broad a couple of times, you know, Outside his body, mm. around the wicket, headband stuff, mm. broads making faces, doing sh- with his hand. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, uh, you know, like is like is Trevor from Belgrave calling up SEN and going, yeah. "Nah, the bull needs a yeah. send off at the SCG." He's one of our no, greats. He's, he's not. one of our greats. Now, and all, like Warner's right. Like, is oh, but hang on, I've played a hundred plus tests. I'm one of the greats. I'm high forties. I've I'm three format. Mm. It's just not how he's seen. You know, and uh, like, and I, I do think though that there's a scenario missing here. People have missed. Yeah, I wonder if Warner's gone. Oh no, I could nick off the Lux yeah. here, mm. uh, and then Harry comes in and he nicks off, and we got a cash in summer coming up. It's yeah. boring as fuck. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, this is a Test cricket is dying summer coming up in Australia. Get your tickets to the ACF, uh, <laughs> and people might go. Well, let's get the ball round again. You know what I mean? Like he mm. maybe want to get drop after the second test. Harry comes in, he nibbles off too. Yeah. Easy nibble. Yeah. <laughs> let's get let's get Warner in for a swung song because I've got nothing else to do. Everyone else is sitting hundreds. Yeah. Let's give him the victory lap he deserves. Someone will write that piece. Someone will try and get that going. It won't be like it won't be like, nah, Renshaw needs another knock. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I do think George Bailey would have seen those quotes and laughed, you know, yeah. and just been like, ah, you know, like He's either going to get runs or he isn't. You know, it's he, one of those he, two things. Yeah, like, and if he doesn't get runs, he'll, he'll be out of the sight. I can see him doing just enough. I can see him. Yeah, doing there's get, a middle. You saying cu- there's a middle ground? Yeah, couple 40, of fifties, couple yeah. of you're thirty yeah. to start with, yeah. and, um, and a quick one as well. No, I, I can't. No, I can't really because he doesn't really play like that anymore. Not really quickly. Qu- no, nah, not not really. Mm. Not really. Hasn't done for a while. Ever since he came back in the side after sandpaper, he didn't really score quick runs. But I can just see him doing enough thirties, forties. And you know what? Open the batting in England. It's perfectly mm. fine. Yeah, right. Warner averages 35 for the like series. Like for water. Yeah. Well, no, 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 yeah. <laughs> he was fucking cr- crucified at the stake for making 50s because <laughs> he right. wanted to stay in. <laughs> <laughs> um, on the uh, – for the India squad ahead of the World Test Championship final, uh, we're about to speak to Bharat Sundaraisen to, to preview that game or to help us preview that game. Uh, but the big question it seems for India is who will be the wicketkeeper, Ishan Kishan or KS Bharat? Ravi Shastri says it could depend on the bowling combination. So he says if they're going to play Ashwin and Jadeja, they're going to play the, the, the two spinners, um, then uh, Bharat is the better keeper, so they'll play it'll play him. But if it's uh, if it's faster and flat like it was at Lords, like what Ben Stokes has been calling for across the country – doctoring wickets and whatnot, uh, then Ishan Kishan could bring a bit of X factor in there, uh, which is an interesting predicament for the Indian side. But uh, I think for the most part, it does look fairly obvious who is going to play in their top, uh, well, their top five, the top six. Jadeja Jade- Jade- will play. Uh, then Rahane will bat five, Kohli will bat four, Pajara will bat three, and then it'll be Gill and uh, Rohit Sharma opening the batting. There's there's your top six right there. Um, and uh, and then it's a question of who's going to be the wicket keeper at seven. Um, and you got to you got to play this out. Like if if it comes down to bowling combinations and can we play two spinners? And the question is, can we doctor the wickets? Yes. To play two spinners mm. now, maybe they can't. Mm. India, 
uh, in fact, because you're playing in England, but Ben Stokes has already come out and said he'd like a certain type yes, of condition. So if right. Ben Stokes knows where his bread is buttered, yeah. and I believe he does, mm-hmm. and I believe Richard Gould and the ECB know where their bread is buttered, yeah. I'd be I'd be going straight to the Oval Curator and going, dust that bad boy up. Pezzi- Let's get Jadeja and Ashwin in the side. Let's get the distributions flowing therefrom. And let's actually knock the Aussies over before we take them on. Pez, it's no coincidence that India have released three new jerseys just in time to give to the curators. Just in time to give to the pitch curators at the Oval so they can doctor those wickets just real nice. What do you make of those? What do you make of those jerseys? (laughs) I I don't. Did you like the PR activation? It was it was three. Of the most gargantuan jerseys yes. hanging over, I think it was a one Katie. Yeah, one Katie. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like like scarily big. As in, if you didn't know it was an activation, mm. you may have thought that there was an invasion. Yes, taking place. And Pat, and in many ways there was. Yeah, that's, many, that's, many the, ways. that's the new kind of uh, many ways. corporate style. Added Ad- 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 three stripe on a test jersey. Yeah. Do you like it? I mean, normally it normally goes down pretty well in a football kit. Why are they doing it for the World Test Championship final? They have the team name across the front as opposed to any like sponsor on the front. They have the team. Uh, New Zealand had it last year, uh, uh, two years ago. So did India had they said India across the front. Yeah. New Zealand had, and Australia's got the same thing when they were doing their uh, their pre match pre match. Look, pre-match, look, look uh, I don't photos. know. I saw uh, Uzi the other day rocking the Australia uh, vest or sweater, whatever you know, whatever yeah, the, the yeah, nomenclature yeah. is, wherever yeah, you're from. Yeah, yeah. And it says Australia, and a lot of people were sort of, um, you know, begrudgingly saying it looked, you know, a lot of English people online, like begrudgingly saying it looked good. And then India's releasing their test kit mm. with three added ass stripes. And, and I'm, I'm just very reluctant mm. to ever say that a cricket kit is fashionable, you know, like uh, yeah. um, for what, for, for hard drive uh, of purposes. Course, of course. But can, like, can, can it, like, should, are we allowing test cricket kits to look good? You know, I don't know. Ever, ever? I don't know what circumstance you can ever wear that in public. Yeah, yeah. Or like, like one day, like what, one day, will there be like you know, like a you know, like flashy high production, um, you know, digital football ventures where they've yeah. got like all of the, you know, the coolest retro kits and shit, and everyone's like slim and fasting, and they look good in you know in a nineteen eighties Saint Pauli yeah, German yeah, kit, yeah, 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 um, and that's the height of football knowledge and mm. and attainment, mm. social attainment. Mm. Will, will there be a time in twenty years like where where kids are like you know wearing you know the Aussie forex kit from the Ashes in ninety three? You know, in, now, and, and is is that fashionable? See, now I kind of want to wear it because it's got a deep V. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in fifty years, it's like you know, it's like like oh, this was this was the kit that you know KS Barrett yeah. wore as a reserve yeah. uh, in the yeah. Test Championship final. Is that the ninety three Australian? Yeah. Oh, that Craig, Craig McDermott had the post office shirt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is, that, is, that when, is that when Adidas came in? Like in twenty twenty three? Yeah, I remember that. that that's a, that's rare. That one. Yeah. Oh, are we still talking about Australia or? We, I just want just one thing. We we have if, to pick up on this. Yeah. Uh, just a headline. I just, I'll, I'll get you to react. Uh, p- people will be hanging out for this. Uh, I did this week, a couple of days ago. The, the great man, uh, the grandfather, grandfather of Australian cricket, modern yeah, Australian cricket, yeah, Alan Border. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Quote: "We're not New Zealand. Legend wants Aussies to be harder." Uh, so Bo- Alan Border offered a couple of quotes. Yes, this? I saw it. Yeah, being Mister Nice Guy. That's New Zealand. They play that card. So some journalists obviously teed him up, going, "Ab, hey, <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about our style?" <laughs> Say the line, Bar. <laughs> they and and love Ab to bits. They play that card. We're not New Zealand. We're the Aussies. We play a certain style of cricket, hard, fair cricket. The Kiwis, they're the ones that play the goody two shoes, but then try they try to beat the shit out of you. And that was a part of the relationship I didn't see. Uh, I d- I d- that was nice behind, behind, behind closed doors. Closed doors. Yes. Yeah. Mark, great batch, etc. You know what, Pez? Big man. Now, what he says, I man, perhaps in the language or the manner thereof, <laughs> is just a little. It's just a little bit like. Is just a little bit like we, we can't. We can't go back to being complete fucking cunts yeah. on the field. We can't go back to that. I don't know what he was asked. Someone must have said, "What do you think about Cummins being nice?" Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Go oh, away, what do you mean, solar panel, yeah, Pat? Yeah. <laughs> Of solar panels. <laughs> it's always been hot. Um, you know what, Pez? I yeah. do think, I do think a little bit that this Australian team, and by this I mean the past mm, just short of a decade, call, call it call it six, seven years, is just missing a little bit of like a, a serial winner. 
And, I, and by that, I mean just I'm, – I'm not sure – who's a serial winner in Australia cricket? I'm, and by that, I mean just a mentality, not like they Kellogg's. just played in the fucking amazing teams – and like you know, Steve Waugh, Ponting, like I think those guys are winners at heart. But like, but how they, are you meant to be one? Like in Australia, like it's, it's yeah, the peak you, team. Like no, where are you course. meant to do your winning? He, Shield level. So he, here's here's what I'm saying. Here's what I think, Pez. Because I, I've been saying for a, a little while, and I know that you agree that like this team is a nearly team, and this team is at right at the very end of its cycle. And because in a couple of years' time, maybe even less than that, the team is going to be completely different. It's going to be almost disbanded because of the age of the players, and obviously cricket's changing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But if I can take you back to a few different examples of when I think Australia were on the precipice of doing something amazing and then didn't. I want to sort of highlight that point. Okay, so in 2015, Australia won the 50-over World Cup at home underneath Michael Clark, mm-hmm. and that was sort of the end of the Clark era. After that, it became Steve Smith's team. They went to India in 2016-17 for the Border Gavaska series. They won the first game. And obviously winning in India is nearly the pinnacle of the sport. Probably the Ashes still is, but um, for an Australian, winning, winning that away from home. But uh, they won 1-0 up in that series. Uh, Steve Smith was leading run scoring in that series. Steve O'Keefe took 12 for in a game. Nathan Lyon took 8 for 50 in an innings, and they lost that game. They ended up losing that series 2-1, but they had a good chance, and they didn't do it. Then in 2018, they go to South Africa, and it was against like the, the last, probably the last great South African team, AB a. De Villiers was playing. It was like peak Rabada coming into his form, fastest to fastest 200 wickets. Faf was at the end of his test match career as well. And Australia go there, and Australia's got a good record in South Africa, but it's almost Come like- Come off 4-0 win at home against that, England. That's right. They go there, sandpaper happens. It fucking destroys Australian cricket for a good period of time. Then in the 2019 World Cup, Australia go there- having barely played any white ball cricket at all, barely focusing any attention to the white ball program. They beat New Zealand and they beat England in the group stages. And then they all have to do is they have to beat South Africa, who had barely won a game. They were already out of the tournament. I think they'd only beaten the Minnows. They'd lost to every other test match playing nation in that tournament in the last game. And if they'd won that, they would have played New Zealand in the semi. Instead, they lose the game. They play England in that semifinal and they get fucking smashed in that semifinal in 2019. And they lost by eight wickets with about 150 balls to spur or something. The 2019 Ashes, Australia uh, have put all their energy into winning that series. They come against, come against an England side that's got uh, Joe Denley batting three. They've got Jason Roy opening the batting. And the, the chat is that England are just fucking exhausted from winning the World Cup. Jimmy Anderson bowls four overs in the entire series. They get uh, they win the game at Headingley nine times over, but they don't mm. win that game at Headingley. Mm. They end up drawing that series. They Again, they didn't quite achieve that thing. They set the whole Ashes up, that, that whole period up in their – cricket to win that Ashes, which probably included yes. not um, putting as much into the World Cup as they should have. They yeah. took a 40-person squad over. They That's got right. Duke's balls into the Sheffield Shield. That's it was right. all about winning away. That's right. In 2021, they missed the World Test Championship final, the first of its kind, by through overrates and also to losing, uh, not winning two games at the end of the Border Gavaskar series at the mm. SCG when they should have done. And then India beat us at the Gabba in that historic game where they couldn't defend 330 on the last day. The 2022 World Cup at home, Australia get absolutely fucking smoked by New Zealand in the first game. Completely, they lost the game by 90 runs, I think it was. Then they all, they almost got themselves back in the tournament eventually after having washed out against England, and they got themselves in a position where they could have jumped into the finals by beating Ireland, but then Lork and Tucker scored some runs. And they mm. didn't make the finals. Mm, mm. The 2023 Border Gavaskar series, they lose the entire series in about one hour at Delhi. There are so many instances that this team, over the course of nearly half a decade, they've, they've nearly done it. And there's something about that is like, how come, how come this team hasn't done it? Now, there are obvious examples where they have done lots of good stuff. Like in the 2019 Ashes, they were, they were eight for 120 or something. And Peter Siddle and Steve Smith do something amazing. And they win that game to set themselves up for drawing the series. They literally won the World Cup in 2021 in the UAE, though we said at the time, it does feel like a lot of caveats with that because if you won the toss in that World Cup, you won the game and they won a number of what, uh, they won every, uh, they won every toss except for one game against England when they lost by 10 wickets. My point being, I like this. My point being that like over the course of six, seven, eight years, this team have been very close to doing something and they never do. And that's why I think England will win the series because I think that Australia will have moments in the Ashes. They'll probably win the World Test Championship final. I don't even know what that means. It, it's an achievement for sure. But like, it just strikes me that, that in the team, I would like someone to just fucking just grab it, just mm. to fucking grab it, you know? And mm. that's what I think Alan Border means mm. when it has a harder oh, edge. Maybe. One of your best. Maybe. Or one, one we should just fucking sledge the cunts. That's good. That's good. All right. Okay. All right. Well, now we're being honest. Yeah. 
I, I think the World Test Championship final is important. There, I said it. <laughs> okay, nonce. <laughs> Checking hard drives. <laughs> nonce. You're a fucking loser, mate. <laughs> I, I and I think they. Uh, I think they believe it's important too. Mm -hmm. I, I think that they get, that team, the core of that team, geared themselves up massively to make that final in the first cycle. Yep. And they were in, they had so much um, tumult in the Justin Langer um, regime, not to like rake up old graves, we've, we've, We've we've wrecked <laughs> that grave. <laughs> yeah. uh, I've overdone it probably, but um, in that regime, there was a lot of things we learned later that were going on that uh, I think was influencing a, some underperformance there and some distraction. And the team was trying to um, find its own identity, you know, outside of the the um, the overwhelming identity of its coach. Mm. Uh, the the heavy identity of its coach, which I don't say in a like as a judgment term, it was just it was Langer's team, and they wanted to break out from it. Right, right, right. Uh, and I think that the the you know forgetting about overrates, these are all of the symptoms of a distracted team. Yes, you know. Yes. Uh, Tim Payne had to bowl a couple of spinners at the start of an, an innings, uh, yeah. which would have looked weird, but it would have secured their passage. Yeah. And I think that was their stated goal. They wanted to be the first team to win that thing, and they. They choked it, yeah. really. And mm. I, that, I like your list on that. That's that's comprehensive. Um, and so I think there is a certain, um, albeit forgotten in our public discourse at the moment, there is a – I wouldn't be surprised if there was a much bigger reserve of redemption floating through the team uh, than, than we're discussing. Yeah. And I think that if they – and I think they will – bring their best cricket to this game. I, I think that it's like uh, a little bit like, um, it's a word, you know, it's it's silly and we're pushing it as well to describe it as a as a warm-up. Mm. I think the public sees it as a warm-up. It's more of a comment on where cricket is in the public sphere yeah, yeah, than, yeah. than the team. I think the team will be coming extremely hard in the game and they will use it as a launching pad. And I do think that, uh, I think that, you know, Cummins has had to uh, – I think Cummins is one of those winners that you're talking about. I know he's been present for some of the things you discussed, but his own performance isn't. And I think that he has wrestled for a long time to get that side uh, to, to be in his image. Mm -hmm. uh, they their, their win in Pakistan I thought was – probably an alternate example to what you're talking about. Yep. I don't think yep. old Australian teams win that. Yep. Uh, and I think Cummins is a person that will – um, take full responsibility for what is about to take place and it could be his time. Mm. Uh, so I, I think it's the bull case for Australia. I think Cummins now feels like a lot of the people that were against him uh, who, who were holding on to the, you know, the the trying to hold on to the reins of Australian cricket uh, are in the rear view mirror mm. now and I, I think it's, it's his to win, you know, or not. And it's a very hard challenge. Like when, who wins away? You know, yeah. Uh, apart from Australia and England in Pakistan, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But who win? Who wins away against you know seasoned <clears throat> teams? It doesn't. It doesn't happen. Uh, but but that is you know that that we've just done a fifteen minute earnest uh, preview of you know what yeah. it, what awaits Australia. It's mm. not funny at all, and I'm frankly quite uncomfortable. We should uh, apologise. Yeah, we should discussing apologize. it in these terms. Um, I, if England 13 wins, sorry, 11 wins from 13 games. One of those was when they led by an innings uh, and they put New Zealand back in. So uh, it, it just maybe that's one that sort of got away from them there. I mean, it's this is a fucking red-hot England team. I think England are overwhelming favourites, though Australia do have the opportunity. That's what makes it so interesting. But I suppose before then is the World Test Championship final and we should speak to someone that's played in the Ashes. And also Jackson Bird, <laughs> which is me to Bharat Santa Raisin. And here he is right now. He goes, as you know, but I'll remind you, uh, we have been extremely lucky to be supported by Shane Watson uh, on this show, especially oh, with IPL that. shows, yeah. live shows, etc. And in turn, we support him in particular, his latest enterprising venture, which is his book, Winning the Inner Battle. Now, how to promote this book? I'm going to go out on a massive limb here. He goes because what Watto is what Watto is promising you reading this book is to give you tools and structures to like him in his own elite career get out of your own way and a hug. I was promised a hug. 
that, that that book promises that too. That might have been a dream I had. <laughs> uh, he uh, he promises you can you can get out of your own way by reading this book. Now I want to I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it on the line. He goes Please. I'm going to lay it out on the line because mm-hmm. what I said to us like look if there's anyone out there who's got the yips yep. in any areas they of their cricket up. they're yipping up bowling double bounces that triggered me a lot. Mm. Uh, whether it's a fielding thrown to the keeper, um, people here will be sitting you know on their own, um, maybe touching themselves, thinking that reminds that- me of the county championship. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be thinking that's me. Uh, if you're, if you're yipping up in any areas of your life, yeah. mainly cricket, but maybe other areas ah. of your life as well, you can get into winning the inner battle. Now I'm going to, I'm going to lay it on the line. He goes, oh, I'm going to read winning the inner battle. Yeah. Cause I yipped up with my leg spin yeah, yeah, and yeah. I'm going to play some T20 cricket at the end of the year, purely with the focus of applying what, what I was said from winning the inner battle. Okay. All right. You can get winning the inner battle at shanewatson.au. He's just going to go direct to you yeah. there. Get out of your own way. Mm. We are lucky to be joined by Crick Buzz journalist Bharat Sundarazan coming to us direct from London. Um, now, Bharat, we're a couple of days out from the World Test Championship final. Uh, very, very simple question, two pronged. Uh, who do you think has the edge out of Australia and India? And what kind of role do you think MS Dhoni can play in deciding <laughs> this match? <laughs> Um, I guess like the test match goes on for, you know, four and a half days, nothing really happens. And then the crowd starts rolling and that's when MS Dhoni walks out, uh, <laughs> gets out first ball, doesn't do much, walks off the field, India win, and everybody celebrates the life of MS Dhoni. I mean, that's just how it's just <laughs> written, right? And I think that's how I see it playing out. But but I have to say this, I mean, the WTC final itself, it's, uh, I still haven't got my head around it because you say, oh, okay, going to England for two months, it's the ashes, right? You think England is the ashes. And even the, though the Australian players have been saying, no, 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 wait, 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 there's the WTC final. You know, they're thinking about the ashes. You know, it, it's just natural. And I was trying to think think about why it feels so random and out of place. It, And I think the analogy I can think of, it's almost like, and maybe it's it's more Indian than Australian, this analogy. It's almost like uh, you, you meet this girl, you get engaged, you set a date for your wedding, and then you spend two months just on Tinder dates, right? You were just <laughs> out and out there every night on Tinder. Uh, uh, clearly, I sound like someone who's never used Tinder. There you go. Uh, and then you still go through with the wedding. And then because there's the ashes, England are like, or Australia are like, all right, now the marriage is done. Uh, I'm going back to my ex, which is England, right? It just feels like a weird, warped uh, marital situation for me, this whole World Test <laughs> Championship final. <laughs> <laughs> I got to say, we, we get a lot of people tweeting us from India in a similar vein, um, wanting to just join in as a third. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, can India be part of the ashes? And I, I would have thought that's more someone saying, listen, can I come and spice up your marriage? Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, uh, let, let's let's work on that analogy. Um, Bharat, we saw um, New Zealand try to decimate the future of Test cricket by winning the World Test Championship in 2021, taking it away from India. Um, do you think that if India win the World Test Championship, do you think that would that would see some sort of increase in um, development of test cricket, generally speaking, or are we too far down the line of IPL nine months a year? What what do you think? No, I think the, that ship has sailed, unfortunately. I mean, that uh, the whole thing of a lot of countries playing test cricket and all of us living happily ever after, I think that 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 narrative is, is long gone. Unfortunately or fortunately, I mean, look, the world is changing. And I'm one who doesn't sit and, you know, worry about, oh, the good old days. Uh, because let's face it, we're not that, we're not hit that age yet. We can do that when we are in our <laughs> 60s, maybe. But I really do think uh, cricket is expanding, right? But it's expanding in, in a league form. You have a US cricket league and someone like Jason Roy going and playing in the US league. I think it's it's a way of the game spreading. Why do we just still just want uh, the expansion of cricket to look like 100 countries playing test cricket? That's never going to happen. Uh, and sport has become such a big business, cricket in particular. And once India had all the power, I mean, they got the power 15 years ago. So uh, this was always the direction it was going to head in. And uh, uh, regardless of whether India win the World Test Championship or not, I think we will complete the next cycle. But you're already seeing some of these other countries like South Africa, New Zealand, not playing enough test cricket. So will it even count as a World Test Championship final once we get to Lords in 2025? I mean, that's the question we need to ask. And, uh, you know, it doesn't matter the result it, it, or, because of the way it's headed, 
it could just be either india or england or australia or england or india or australia playing the world test championship finals from this point on yeah but on the other hand barrett i was listening to some england sky cricket commentary and they were saying that if it's a good series between australia and england it might actually save test cricket and um things can go back to everything that we wanted when we grew up as children no um you're you're, Barrett, you're a you're an inveterate uh net watcher we're speaking early London time because you have to go out and watch the Aussies train in particular, Steve Smith train. Uh, you know, what are you gleaning from the Aussie nets so far? Uh, who's overstepping, who's standing behind um, uh, like the bowlers with their arms folded, uh, who's skipping fitness, like who's turning up in a suit. <laughs> Wow, a lot of questions to answer there. But look, they had a seven-hour marathon session the other day. Uh, the, pretty much the day after I landed on Saturday in Kent, in Beckenham, uh, in a very opulent part of Greater London, where they still have ice cream trucks, which I was very impressed by. Uh, you know, that, that's the only time the Aussies were distracted. Whenever the thing just went past. It's a hell of a sound. Yeah, it is. That's right, right. So I think... Uh, what I noticed was, yeah, I mean, there was a lot of focus on Hazelwood and Green and getting them fit. And I was I was there when Andrew McDonald, now when I look back, like gave Hazelwood that message that, look, we, we you might have to wait till the Ashes. He bowled three proper full spells and got Steve Smith out a couple of times, which generally means Steve Smith's going to spend the next three and a half hours working on just that dismissal, and which is exactly what he did. He was trying to bat outside leg stump just making sure that he just gets into the line with off stump before I nerd you guys out. Uh, and there was also Michael Nisa doing Michael Nisa things, right? Hashtag Nisa must play. I have to talk about him. Uh, and to the extent there was, uh, I don't know, the, the new support staff guys every time was still going to. There is a guy who looks a lot like Michael Nisa as well. So I don't know whether they're playing mind games with whoever, but it's uh, it, it was quite a standout for me. So I'm a little obsessed, as you can see. Uh, but for me, the standout was David Warner. I mean, he announces that, uh, hey, I mean, he plays such a ballsy move by saying, oh, you know, I'll put the ball in the selector's court once again. I'll, I want to retire in Sydney. There you go. You just take, you want to break my heart? You want to break my family's heart? You mentioned family, you mentioned <laughs> legacy, everything. Very smart man, David Warner. And now, uh, you know, it's in the selector's hands. Uh, but then after he announces that uh, his desire to retire in Sydney in seven months' time, he hangs around for all seven hours. And it was quite something. You could see it felt like the David Warner of old, just the energy he was bringing to the practice session. Obviously, he spent the first half just batting and working out his own game. And then the second half, like three hours or so, he basically just stood behind Manas Labushin and gave him a lot of shit. That's what he was doing mainly. <laughs> uh, if he wasn't like wanging balls at Usman Khawaja. But uh, he, he, felt he was a live wire. Like, you know, he was just everywhere uh, on that day. Uh, but it's interesting now that the focus shifts to the Oval. I mean, Andrew McDonald said Beckenham was all about WTC final. Uh, whereas uh, the Fromby or wherever they went in Liverpool was not about golf. It was about discussing the Ashes. I mean, you can always discuss cricket while you play golf, right? Let's go. So, uh, so, so we'll see how, how that pans out. But again, like I said, it, it's, I had to keep telling myself that the first people I'll meet on this tour are Rohit Sharma and Rahul Dravid and Virat Kohli, right? For me, I'm kind of, not, I'm not moved on from it, it but it, this, it is a bit of a throwback for me. And that's what's going to happen today when I go to the Oval. I think let's talk about India, Bharat. Um, I think that people, I think the top six is the top six, right? I think that's pretty, that's pretty settled. And then it gets interesting. Who's going to wicket keep for the country and then the bowlers. I mean, the wicket keeping thing is interesting because like Rudiman Saha would have had a fairly decent claim to it. He's not even there. He had a good IPL as well. Obviously famous, great warm up for uh, the Walters championship final of the IPL opening the batting. Um, but, uh, but who, who do you, who do you fancy? Do you fancy Ishan Kishan, a bit of, a bit of raw sex with Ishan Kishan or the safe hands of uh, KS Bharat? I mean, Bharat's have great safe hands. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Are they big? <laughs> I would always bank on a Bharat. Now look, I think he had an up and down first test series against Australia because he was known for his keeping and he's been a top order batter pretty much all his life. Uh, he played a couple of decent hands. I mean, Ahmedabad, uh, that was a flat pitch. But even in Delhi, he played pretty well in that run chase. Uh, but his keeping kind of faltered, which which is a concern for India. Right? When Bridhiman Saha, whether he scored runs or not, his keeping was always ace Right? when he played for India. Uh, India have obviously moved on from him. He's 38, 39. Uh, which is not an age people should move on from because I have 38 now. Uh, <laughs> and you guys can relate with this as well. Uh, I, but I think they'll stick with KS Bharat uh, just because Ishan Kishan's keeping is... 
I mean, just speaking of keeping, I don't think it's been tested enough in first class cricket from what I've heard from the Indian circles, especially in early June at the Oval when the ball does swing a lot after it passes the stumps and all that magic that happens in uh, in these English test grounds. Uh, so I think just to this, as a result of that, I think KS Bharat keeps his place. Uh, and also now they have the safety of Ajinkya Rahane back in the side. He's batting well. He's feeling well. I bumped into him the, uh, yesterday at the Oval. Uh, you can see that he, he he's happy to be back. And he always does well against Australia, as we know. Um, take your pick of what whatever you want to answer out of this, Bharat. Uh, is Rohit under pressure? Uh, are you playing two spinners? And is it fair to say that where Australia and England relax by playing golf, India relaxes by going to strip clubs? <laughs> well, we don't have strip clubs in India. So I'm just saying that if you <laughs> want to go to a strip club, you have to travel overseas anyway. I mean, fair I mean enough, I'll just man. say that. Whether they are going there or not, well, I don't know. But it's it, you can't be an Indian cricketer and uh, be inconspicuous in, in a even in a strip club. I think just think about it, right? Like, mm. yeah, they uh, you can't get away with it anymore. I'm sure they, there used to be different uh, issues back in the 80s and 90s, but you can't anymore. Uh, Rohit Sharma under pressure, definitely under pressure. Not just Rohit, the Ahul Rawit as well. Look, India haven't won an ICC title in a long time. Doesn't mean that they won't snatch 90% of your money. Uh, <laughs> good. I like it. That's not the point. That's not how it works. That's not how business works. Uh, uh, but they need a big title. Like They did beat Australia at home, uh, but in Australia, ran them close. They need a big series win or a big uh, title win like this away from home uh, because, you know, Ravi Shastri is going to be there doing commentary. Twice I beat Australia and fucking Australia. So, you know, <laughs> Rahul Ravi has a long way to go as coach to catch up with them. I mean, no other coach has done that before. Uh, so, as as a unit, and look, they're all, Rohit Sharma might not play test cricket for maybe, he's in, he is definitely in the latter half of his career, maybe a year or so or two years from now. Uh, his time would be done. So I think all those factors, uh, if you put them together, I think Rohit uh, and the, this Indian team is under pressure to big, win a big title. And the two spinners, look, uh, they, they tri- the last time Ashwin played a test in England was the World Test Championship final in 2021. And they didn't go India's way. And Jadeja is, is uh, in my opinion, a better all-rounder than Ben Stokes. Honestly, I know I'll be buried in England. Maybe my Airbnb host kicks me out because I said that. <laughs> Maybe not. She doesn't seem very interested in cricket. But uh, so he just plays as an all-rounder. It's just a question of whether they uh, stick with Shardul Thakur as the fourth seeming all-rounder or they bring Ashwin in. But just watching Ashwin yesterday, walking around um, a- a- as a student of body language, I think he looked like he's going to play. We'll, we'll see. There's still two more days. I'll let you guys know after I see him today. I like that you said that you're in an Airbnb. I think it's fairly obvious that you're in a strip club in the moment. <laughs> um, <laughs> Especially with this, this jacket on. <laughs> All right, one more for me. Um, India win the World Test Championship final. Who's the man of the match? Paint me a picture. How do they do it? Uh, without Jasprit Bumrah, I think they uh, will need Mohammad Shami to take wickets. I mean, he's bowled beautifully in England over the years, but he's not taken enough wickets. Right? That's been the that's been the thing with him. Uh, so I see Australia batting first. Mohammad Shami taking a fifer. Australia struggling to get to like two hundred and ten. India come out, there's a bit of a collapse. Uh, and then Shubman Gill, I mean, it's it, we are in the era of Gill, right? Like he, he mm-hmm. needs to do something so that he can take his top off. So he makes <laughs> that big World Test Championship final 100, uh, maybe one, 145 he makes. Uh, and, and India go ahead by, I'm going to say around 180 runs. Uh, there's some lower order runs from Bharat and Ashwin, who I think will play. Uh, and, and then... Ashwin comes into the game, right? Ashwin comes into the game, takes doesn't take a fiver, takes a four for uh, a few wickets for Siraj. Siraj and David Warner get into a, a bit of a mouthy battle. Uh, and, you know, <laughs> Australia finish just like, I think, 70 runs ahead. Uh, India lose two quick wickets. And people are like, oh, God, India panicking. Yeah, yeah, but then deep. Virat Kohli is there saving the day, scoring uh-huh. the winning runs, pointing at Anushka Sharma, celebrating and... <laughs> You know, that's it, the World Test Championship final. Maybe at that point, India said, you know what, we won it. We don't need to play this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Uh, Bharat Sundaraisen from Crick Bus. You can follow Bharat for the World Test Championship final and all through the Ashes in England. Thanks so much for joining us, mate. We'll catch you over in the UK in 10 days. Oh, can't wait. Always a pleasure, boys. Thank you so much.
Okay, we are with Jackson Bird, ladies and gentlemen, Tasmania's all-time leading wicket taker in the Sheffield Shield, top 10 all-time Shield wicket taker. Now stick with me here, he goes. This is an Equinox stuff of 42 bowlers in the Sheffield Shield history to have taken over 250 wickets. You with me? Mm. 42 over 250 wickets. Jackson Bird has the best average, 21.9, and the best strike rate. 45.6. Oh, I can, go, I, can so, go, I can go further. You want to go further? Yeah. In, you want to, you want, yeah. In the top 100 Sheffield Shield wicket takers of all time, only three have a better average and none in the last 60 years. I'm, I'm saying top of the top 42, he's the best. I should so have started. A, I should yeah, have started. Yeah. <laughs> and then if you're thinking, and because he'll say this, he'll, he'll go like, I played a lot at Bell Reeve. Home average 20, yeah. away average 22.5. Yeah. So, yeah. anyway, uh, he's joined us on the show. <laughs> Thanks for that. Uh, and he's sure we just talk about that. Yeah, we'll just, you just sit there and just look, watch us talk yeah. ourselves. Keep going, mate. Uh, Jackson, well. But, well, well, welcome back to the Great Cricket. It's your second time Thank on the you. show. Yeah, no, thanks, guys. I'm um, happy to be here. So it's always always fun to come back on the show. Well, I, I, I know, Jackson, like, for those watching on YouTube, um, this isn't normally the case, but uh, you've moved states, you've moved back home to New South Wales, which is interesting to us like, being from New South Wales. And you're just wearing a bit of blues kit there as well. Uh, like an awesome I am, yeah. Season, but I just yeah. saw the little crest there. So you must feel nice yep. to just get your hands back on the kit. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, yeah. And, and, and just for some for some history, like you, you left New South Wales, you don't know this, but you left New South Wales because you couldn't find an opportunity there uh, back in 2011, fair few uh, bowlers knocking around. Yep. Uh, and before season's end, you were being handed your baggy green cap by Bill Laurie at the MCG. Um, <laughs> 350 shield wickets later, you end up as his highest ever wicket taker. So when conversations about you returning to New South Wales commenced with their administration, like how tempting was it to start with like, look who's come crawling back? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, look, it was, uh, it's funny how it all works out really. Um, I, was, I spoke to the boys at training today and, yeah, look, I didn't think it'd take till I was 36 to be given this kit. Um, <laughs> obviously, got it when I played second 11 for New South Wales. But I remember my first time I, I trained with the Blues at training as a net bowler. I had a shirt that had net bowler on, stitched into the shirt. So <laughs> it's come a long, it's come a long can way. Can since you paint then. that picture of the of the like that net bowling you did as a as a junior? Like, like who was there? Uh yeah, it was. Um, you know, a, a lot of guys that I've grown up playing with, sort of Smitty and Husey and Moses, um, gave me quite a bit of stick for it. Um, and then next training session in the bin, wore my manly kit. Um, and then, you know, I got upgraded to second 11. So I actually got the kit a couple of weeks, a couple of months later. So I uh, didn't cop as much stick. But I remember the first time I went and bowled to them, I think they were playing a T20 game um, the next day. So... It was great. I bowled for two hours and then just had blokes just trying to slog me everywhere. So I think I got 50 bucks for it as well. So back then, obviously not earning too much money, <laughs> picking up glasses at the Mossman Hotel, I think I was. So um, it was a bit extra beer money for the weekend. So, <laughs> But yeah, look, I'm thrilled to be back. Um, and it's been exciting the last couple of days getting around all the boys. And um, yeah, it's been fun. In 2011, when you left, you would have been behind Stuart Clark. Is Brett Lee still playing? Brett Lee still my still. I think he was playing T20. I think Safraz had stopped playing. It was sort of Trent Copeland had just yeah. started and obviously started really well. Um, and yeah. then obviously the younger guys coming through, Hazelwood, Stark, Cummins. Yeah. Um, they were sort of behind those guys. Um, and not much changed when I went to Tassie as well. I was behind those guys, you know, trying to get into the Australian team as well. Um, and obviously Doug... Doug the Rug was in his prime back then. So um, there was, yeah, plenty of, of great fast bowlers. Uh, Mark Cameron was another one as well. Um, right. So, yeah, I guess no opportunity there for me. Um, and Tassie obviously offered me a contract and, and it turned out, I suppose, a pretty successful move in the end. Because when, when you left in 2011, did you have Australia in your head? Because you played Aussie 19s, didn't you? So, like, you, did you have Australia yeah. in your head in 2011, or was it just maybe first hurdle, just like just just get a just get a shield gig first? Oh no, yeah, there was no. Obviously, deep down, you have the ambition of wanting to play Test cricket, but I suppose at that stage of my career, I wasn't too keen on letting other people know that because they'd probably look at me and laugh. Um, but. Yeah, look, I mean, I never doubted, I guess, my ability and all that sort of stuff. I, I felt like I just needed an opportunity. Um, and I think 
moving states was probably um, the best thing for me in terms of getting me out of my comfort zone. Um, you know, I was sort of living in Manly and playing in Manly and it's sort of like a little bubble down there, you know, and um, I probably wasn't in the years prior as dedicated as I should have been. Um, you know, working in hospitality, it's obviously pretty easy to to let yourself go after work and all that sort of stuff. So um, cricket wasn't really my main priority. Um, and then, yeah, once I sort of started playing second 11 and stuff like that, um, I was just keen on making a list first and not having to I suppose, work at the pub every week. But not, not that there's anything wrong with that, but obviously playing cricket professionally was a big step up from that. So that was probably my main goal. And then it all happened pretty quickly after that. Um, I was lucky enough to come into a really good team at Tasmania um, was sort of the golden era of, era of Tasmanian cricket. Um, and I, I guess I was lucky that sort of took the pressure off me. I could just get in behind those guys like Ben Hilfenhaus and Butterworth. James Falken was in his prime. Um, and I could just slot in behind those guys and, you know, um, go to work that way, which is really good. Um, Jackson, I mean, it's the season for, for the Ashes. I guess this is a World Test Championship, but I guess that's just a warm up. But um, yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> You know, uh, I wanted to talk to you around this time of, uh, you know, the, 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 the prelude to the ashes, because, you know, the war of words is just such an important part of any ashes series. And, um, you know, when you, when you're in, in, involved in the war of words, like you don't want to get on the wrong side of the absolute, you know, banter Kings, the Barmy army, you know what I mean? Like, um, yeah. Just the best in the well, business. Yeah, I'm well aware yeah. of that. So. Yeah. Rap, <laughs> you know, and I, I, I'm sorry, to, I'm sorry to bring it up. Um, no. Like, like a, th- th- there's there's the day at the MCG where, where they asked you to break your back uh, for the team um, on the yeah. wicket, and and the Barmy Army, you know, I'm just reading a, an article about this, like that it actually made it to to print. This was newsworthy, apparently. You know, they they gave it to you that that you know bowls to the left stuff. Um, there were apparently seagulls on the ground, and 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 they said hilariously, "You're the shittest bird here." Um, yeah. you know, that's a good one off the top. Yeah, yeah. Do remember that? Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like you're being kind. I'm kind of trying to set it up differently, so just go with it. But, um, <laughs> like, you know, like, like, you know, how, how mentally grueling is it, you know, when the, the, the Barmy Army, they sort of got a bit of sandpaper suit stuff happening now. Like, how, how tough is it when they wrap their mitts in there? Uh, you know, top tier, top tier. Yeah, it was horrific, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Looking back on it now, it's actually pretty funny, but, um, but yeah, at the time, obviously, I had a tough, tough day. There's no doubt about it. Um, you know, that sort of style of wicket um, was is probably least suited to me out of any wicket that I'd ever played on. So um, I had a tough day, and then I'd sort of avoided that end of the ground for most of the day. Um, and then I think I don't know how I ended up down there. Smithy said, "Can you go down and do?" It was either third man or fine leg, and then. As I was walking down, I could just see 20,000 of them stand up and I just thought, oh, shit, this is going to be a long... I think I was down there for about an hour and a half and all Smithy had to do was, um, you know, move me to mid-off at the other end and I would have been fine. (laughs) But, yeah, after a long day in the dirt, it was pretty demoralising, to be honest. Um, I got off the field um, and, yeah, I just sunk into my chair and I just... I was... It was... It was... Horrific, but that's what I mean. Looking back on it now, it's it's funny. So, um, but at the time, yeah, no good. So I think that the, that night, waking up in the morning the next day, that was the only time I'd ever thought about calling in sick for a game of cricket that I was still playing in because I was just <laughs> shattered. So, um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I suppose they're the things you got to deal with in the Ashes. It's a huge series. Um, you know, that's probably. Me copying, copying it like that is probably light on the, you know, on the abuse scale that they give to some people. So, um, but yeah, thankfully that was my last test and I never had to go through that again. So, <laughs> well, just, just speaking of that, because you have played in, in, in England before, a test match in England before. I just wonder, yeah. like, it's going to be such a squad game, isn't it, Bertie? Like these Ashes with uh, what six tests in six weeks, essentially. Like, have have you had any conversation with anyone about being on standby or anything? I mean, the Sheffield Chill record is fucking amazing. Yeah, no, I haven't, to be honest. Look, I'm 36, and to be honest, my I played a couple of stints in county cricket, um, and, you know, I, I actually haven't done that well over in England. So um, I think they've got a few guys over there playing um, county cricket. Michael Neese is playing county cricket. Um, and to be honest, actually, I'm not sure who else, but 
I think, yeah, like you said, it is going to be a squad mentality. I think the days are over where you, you, you know, four quicks or three quicks are going to play every test. And especially with this test, you know, this warm-up game going on in a couple of days on the World Test Championship, I don't think... Um, I don't think, yeah, the, the bowlers are going to... Maybe Pat's probably the only one that's going to play all six tests. Um, and, you know, obviously someone like Josh probably won't. Um, he's had a bit of troubles with injury over the last sort of couple of um, couple of months. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be a squad mentality. I wouldn't be surprised if you do see um, someone like Michael needs to come in and play, play at some stage throughout the series. Um, and, look, he probably deserves that as well. He's, he's got a phenomenal record in county cricket in England and he, and he takes wickets for fun in Australia. Um, and, you know, I'm really excited to actually see how uh, Barrel or Scott Boland goes over there. I think um, the way he started his test career and um, I think his sort of bowling is going to be really suited down um, to the ground in, in England. So I'm really looking forward to see how he goes. He's a great bloke as well. And I love, I love seeing him do well. So, Oh, you're selling such a nice guy, Jackson. Uh, let, let, let's get some dark stuff. Um, <coughs> yeah. Uh, who do you hate? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Showers. Well, George Bailey is a dickhead, so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll start with him. Uh, um, <laughs> you just mentioned warm-up games there before, and uh, you were so close to making the 2019 side that was there last yeah. time. and. You know, there are these sort of like mythological. There was there was footage, but like you know, stories about the 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 warm up game that JL made oh, you guys play yeah. at Southampton before selecting the squad. It was a flatty, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. you, you you did well. It was like you you took three for twenty eight in the first innings, and uh, and you know, seventeen wickets are falling on the day, and these are guys yeah. who are, like all quicks were playing for one reserve spot. You know, like you, Nisa, yeah. Siddle, uh, Chris Tremaine, everyone was in red hot form. And I don't know if you're joking saying this publicly or not, but like apparently you guys had to be like the, the teams were separated before the games, couldn't talk to each yeah. other and stuff as well. Trained like, separately and stuff train, like that. What, yeah. I mean, run me through. Like that sounds like some SAS psycho shit. <laughs> now the boys are out on form <laughs> yeah. course, you know, preparing. Like, you know, which which preparation do you do you prefer? And like, can you just take us inside that crazy 2019 yeah. warm-up? Yeah, look, that was probably the most bizarre sort of week of my career, um, I reckon. Um, we'd obviously been over there for an Australia A tour. We played three or four games before that, and we sort of didn't know what to expect because it was, I think the World Cup was on at the same time. So there was a sort of a mix between test only players and Aussie A guys in the squad. And we didn't really know what to expect. We'd been hearing things from the World Cup squad about what was going on behind closed doors there. And it was, it was, yeah, the build up to it was was bizarre and um even during the game it was yeah, I don't know, it was everyone talking about what do you reckon they're gonna do and just, you know, who's gonna take the last spot and and then to be honest, the most bizarre day was the day that they told us that we weren't getting in. So it was basically in alphabetical order. We had to go, we had our set times that were five or ten minutes apart. So you got the guy coming out. And I was at, well, I was at the basically at the top, and I think JL was sick, so he wasn't in there. So I was with Trevor Holmes, and you walk, I walked in, and it was like, oh, you know, you've done really well over here, but you know, you unfortunately you haven't made the the squad. I said, well, who's who's in it ahead of me? And he goes, oh, I can't tell you that because I haven't told them yet. And I'm like, so I just walked out, and I was like, what the? So I was fuming anyway, so I left. And <laughs> but the weird thing was the. I, found the most bizarre thing was our flight wasn't until wasn't until the next night and they're like oh we're all going to get together and have a few beers tonight you know the guys in the Ashes squad and the guys not in the Ashes squad <laughs> and I was like there is no way that I'm staying here so I rang to I rang um Gab Dovey who was the manager at the time and I was like just book me a car to go to London as soon as possible so I got out of there quick smart um and had you know, two pretty big nights on the piss in London with a couple of friends from school <laughs> and my old man. And I just couldn't be around it anymore. And I think it was, yeah, I mean, the idea of it was good because um, I've been, I went to the Ashes in 2013 and some of the warm-up games that you do play in, you're playing against the second side, second string, you know, Worcester. And I remember we played, Shane Watson got 100 on day one before lunch and didn't bat again and it was kind of like it wasn't 
you know, the standard of cricket wasn't great. So I understand that side of it, but it was, yeah, it was bizarre. So I'm not sure they'll they'll do that again. So it was pretty funny looking back on it. But um, yeah. obviously, this is uh, this is the first time captaining an Ashes series for for Pat. Uh, you would know Pat pretty well. Uh, I, I feel like uh, most of Australia <clears throat> don't realise how alpha Pat Cummins actually is. He's very low-key alpha. Have you come across some alpha experiences with Pat Cummins? <laughs> um, uh, not really, to be honest. Like I haven't spent a lot of time with Pat sort of around the Australian team because obviously most of the time I spent with the Australian team um, was he was sort of injured and wasn't around. So... Um, he hasn't tried to, to alpha me yet, but obviously coming to New South Wales, you never know um, when he comes back to train with us for the one time a year that he probably does. He, you never know. He might might come out with something there. So yeah. um, now, as you guys know, Pat's a great bloke. Um, he cops a lot of stick. He has been copping a bit of stick at the moment just for his sort of views away from cricket, um, which is that I find that actually pretty funny because – you know, he's too sort of perfect of a bloke, so it's nice to see him cop that sort of stick that I didn't quite do. So <laughs> no, pretty happy with you it. cop it for a couple of hours on Sky <laughs> after dark every Absolutely. night. Absolutely, yeah. 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 You should you should definitely give him a, a net bowler shirt when he comes back to New yeah. South Wales. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I still had that shirt. It's I can't believe that, that they actually thought that that was a good idea, but just wanted to separate us plebs from the, the stars that... Cricket New South Wales. So. I should put you in full whites, like in the third net. You know what I mean? Like, a, anyway, um, uh, um, just just on the, you know net net politics, Bertie. Um, you know you're you're a senior player. Uh, there's um lots of conjecture at the moment because everyone in the media is just trying to fill vacuum uh with it. But uh about about Davy Warner's spot. Uh, I'm not going to ask you to comment on his spot, but um uh he's seems to be on he's made a couple of comments in, in public in the last 24 hours saying i'd like to you know f- finish in sydney if, if possible um if i score some runs i think they're reasonable comments but you know we can have fun with it he, and and as part of those comments he said you know i'm actually i'm actually in great form in the nets uh yeah. you know so like, um, <laughs> can you just tell us at the senior level he just says he's better than ever in the nets so i'm just thinking in cricket if, in your, if you're a senior player like is that normally good enough just to book another game? You know, just to say like, look, I'm I'm hitting well in the nets, good to go. Yeah, I think so. Look, every time you know, I feel like I'm not bowling that well, and speak to the coach. That's how they're coming out. Yeah, beautifully, man. I'm yep, <laughs> oh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go. And even back in my mind, I'm like, I don't even know where to go. So I think um, <laughs> that's something that you do gain with experience. Um, and yeah, bull. I, I did see bull's um, comments. Um, and look, I think he probably deserves to be able to go out when he wants to, really, unless he, I guess, struggles again like he did in the last Ashes. Um, you know, I, I feel like he's still the best best option that we have, apart from Usman, who's obviously had a, a massive sort of turnaround in the last inform not in form, but in his sort of test career in the last couple of years. Um, I think, you know, Davey's probably our best option. And, yeah, I hope he, I hope he does go out and... Um, you know, turn the sort of baseball tables on on the the English, um, and I think he deserves to go out when he wants to. It's, uh, I think I'm not sure why he's not playing that West Indies series because that's that'll be an absolute fill up to end his career. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> so I think he should. I think he should keep playing then, and then just get another couple of Test hundreds under his belt. Yeah, if he sees Ross and Chase opening the bowling, he might have a look. He might have a look at another <laughs> yeah. triple hundred. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> I can't believe they're coming back out here again after last summer. So, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, there'll be a few blokes that don't come. Don't come. I don't reckon. So. Yeah. Just um, just quick. I was, I was going to wrap up, but I just want to ask you. Uh, you just mentioned baseball there. You know, obviously, like England. England's done it against pretty much everybody, uh, and it's yeah. been amazing to see. Like the, some of the scores are jaw dropping but there's still just that little thing in the back of our australian egos just going like well you know what what about against yeah. you know, our boys <laughs> uh, you know i mean you only a couple of years ago you were you were over there you know a bee's dick away from playing the ashes in england i mean how how, how would you approach baseball as a as a quick and and you know if you do believe this could you actually just say i'd like to see them try it against our boys yeah um it's been amazing watching them um the turnaround so quickly in terms of how they play their cricket and it's 
I think it's going to be interesting to see what the Aussies do when they do get under the pump and they do have a day where England get, you know, 450 or something like that because it's sort of, like you said, you have I've heard so many of the players say, oh, yeah, I, you know, I'd love to see them do it against our attack. But when it actually does happen, you know, that's, they'd be sitting back on shit. They actually can do it against our attack. So it'll be interesting to see um, where they go from there. Uh, I can't wait to to see what happens um, this series. I think, um, yeah, I think it is going to be probably a little bit tougher against some of our blokes, um, but I, I think they're going to go down swinging. It's it's good entertainment, um, you know, either 450 in a day or all out for 100. So um, it'd be nice to see some of our blokes do it as well. Obviously, Eddie does that anyway. So um, it would almost be... Yeah, good to see that sort of alpha move of them, Australia doing it back to, to England. But it did, uh, it's going to be an exciting series. You, you just mentioned before, like, you know, you talked talk to a couple of players who said, I'd, I'd like to see them do it. Like, do you, do you think there are players who, like, that they, they don't believe that England could do it against us? Like, like as a quick, I mean, I've, I've you know, I've, I've seen you in action, like, up close. I've seen others in action up close. Like, that'd be very difficult. Like, you guys, for your whole lives, have been the best bowler in every side that you've ever played in from, like, under sixes. You know, all, all the way through, especially these guys on the Aussie side now, they will have never experienced a day where they're going at sixes and getting boshed around. Surely they will, str- the egos will struggle in that situation. You know, like, yeah, oh, you're, you're yeah. Bothered. someone's boof- boofing you over your head, boofing, uh, <laughs> your head. uh, like, you know, that, that's, that's got to be tough to take. Yeah, big time. Um, I'm glad that I'm sort of not in, in their position because. <laughs> <laughs> my sort of style of bowling, I'd get absolutely murdered. And so, <laughs> but I think, um, I think, I suppose what these guys, the strengths that they've got, they're all pretty good T20 bowlers in their own right. So I guess, you know, if they are going at six and over, they've got that sort of stuff that they can fall back on um, and change it up a little bit. Um, it'll be interesting to see how they play Gazza as well um, and see how he sort of, you know, responds to that. Um, but, yeah, it's a geez, massive ego blow. And the tough thing about a bowler is that when you you are going at six and over like that, there's nowhere to hide. You've got to cop it all day. It can be one of the longest days of all time, at least with batting. You obviously get out and you, you go and sit in the sheds. But um, over there, the crowd's going to be pretty raucous. And if they do get a hold of the Aussies, it's going to be a huge dent to the ego. But like I said, I think you know the boys are good enough to, to have plans. And I'm sure they've, they've got you know, plan A, plan B, and plan C for most of the guys. So, um, yeah, it's going to be exciting either way. Birdie, uh, a great preview. I like that. I'm sort of pumped up now. Thanks so much for joining us, mate. Welcome back to New South <laughs> no, Wales. No you know, we're all Thank from you. there. So good to see where you belong. Certain safety for me yeah, yeah, yeah. that you're back in the blue uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, finally get that kit that you deserved a long time yeah. ago. Uh, but, mate, yeah. thanks so much for joining us. We'll catch you around. No worries. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you very much to our special guests, uh, Barrett and Jackson. Uh, thank you so much for their time. Um, the Women's Ashes, Pez, is running concurrently, as we know. Uh, we broke on the news. Well, we, did, we didn't break it. Uh, the, the news broke last week on last week's podcast that uh, Meg Lanning is out of the Ashes. Uh, we don't know exactly what the problem is, and we understand that um, – the, the team didn't even know at the time. I'm not sure what's changed since then, but uh, Elisa Healy uh, on Meg Lanning, not playing in the Ashes, said, I've finally probably come to terms Come to terms with it. It's been a rough couple of days, uh, Healy told ESPN Crick Info. Everyone is a little bit emotional about the whole Meg situation, but at the same time, I'm grappling with being really excited and nervous about the challenge of captaining an Ashes series. It's interesting, Bez. I mean, the, the, the there's been conversations. In fact, we had the conversation about where this Australian women's team sits in the pantheon of all sporting teams in the history of um, competitive sport. Uh, going back to Athens, of course, uh, in 1896. Uh, and I love discussing them in those terms. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Alicia Healy, uh, <laughs> Alicia Healy is apparently going to drop down the order given the extra, extra responsibility of captaining the side. Phoebe Litchfield and Beth Mooney opened when they played against Pakistan in the White Ball Series uh, in Australia. In the Australian summer just gone, Phoebe Litchfield probably about to get a test cap debut, though uh, Shelley Nitschke, the coach, said that uh, that wasn't a lock just yet. But it's interesting, the makeup of the side, because obviously Rachel Haynes isn't playing anymore. She is retired. Um, so no no Lanning, no Haynes. Uh, Healy dropping down the order, though that s- seems to be 
because she wants to perform better. So there's that. Uh, Australia would still remain favourites. Uh, I wouldn't say England are the strongest they've ever been. But let me give you the schedule and the breakup of it. So obviously it's a, it's a points-based system for the women's Ashes. There's 16 points up for grabs. The test match, uh, which starts on June 22 in Nottingham, it's a five-day test match as well instead of four days because I think the last maybe four or five test matches in women's cricket have all been draws. So they're adding a fifth day to this one in the hope that it, uh, it gets a result. But that is worth four points. Then there are three T20s after that, worth two points each at Birmingham, the Oval, and Lords. Uh, and then there are three ODIs to finish. That's a Bristol, Southampton, Taunton. The last match is on July 16. So the entire rash is from June 22 to July 16. All wraps up in three weeks. Um, so the test match is worth four points. So you get two points for a draw. Each ODI and T20 is worth two points, one point each if it's a washout. So 16 points up for grabs. If, you, if Australia makes eight points, then they will retain the Ashes, of course. Um, so, I, it's, I mean, this is the same with all these series. Uh, it's the same with the India series. But... Um, Four points for the test match. If Australia can win the first test, if Australia can win the test match, they would have to then only win two games of the remaining six and they barely lose a game ever. So um, that uh, that seems very important, that test match. Am I understanding the absolute obvious there? Yeah, mate, it's worth double the other uh, games. I, th- I mean, Fucking I think... idiot. <laughs> it, 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 like, the question is, can Australia take all 16 points? <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, I was I was burning Australian flags in. Uh, in yeah. <laughs> they, they, they got a, they got a you know I'd assume they're in the dressing room just yeah. with various um, pictures of effigies. Yeah, that's you know, right. Just, un, just understanding if they do, if they don't take sixteen points, I mean, I'm, I'm for, going I'm going to Shepherd's Bush. I'm going to yeah. the walkabout. Yeah, and I'm burning the Australian flag. <laughs> <laughs> it's a. Um, oh, I mean, I, you know, I I really look. None of, none of us knows what's happened with Meg. I think no. it's a very tightly kept um, yeah. um, situation. Uh, so z- zero ideas about it. Uh, I, you know, Other than it's, it's, it's um, not related to the break she took, um, for, uh, I believe. Right. Yeah. Um, for, for mental illness, uh, for, sorry, for mental health. Yeah, I, um, I'd heard it suggested that b- because they described it in such explicit terms last time, then yes. you can probably assume that it's right. not uh, that. But... Um, Nevertheless, like, you know, hearing Elisa Healy say that uh, it's been a rough couple of days and that everybody's a little bit emotional is, you know, that's just... It's heavy uh, stuff. Well, it's, you know, it, I, I get with zero idea we're talking about. It's just not the way sports people talk yep. uh, normally. So you just, your heart goes out to Meg and everyone around her, um, irrespective of, uh, of having, you know, no information about it. Um, that's important. It's It sounds like it sucks and it's really important to say first up. No Lanning, um, no Haynes. Well, I expect 16 points. <laughs> <laughs> Away from home. Accrued. Yeah. Accrued. A, a bonus point it's possible? A, it's a compliment, you know. <laughs> Can I, I see it? Beth Mooney's been doing a work placement as a police officer. Yeah, yeah. Go and get that done, Beth. Yeah. Now go out, 500 runs, yeah. min. You know what I mean? A um, couple of parking yeah. fines, Healy. 500 runs, yeah, right. 16 points, <laughs> right. song. <laughs> Healy down the order, trappings different. Still want numbers next to names, you know? Yeah. Who are they bringing in? Litchfield, new. Good. Good. Let's see something. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, you know. It, oh, we really should know more about it. I speak for myself. I speak for myself. Let's get into hashtag ICDC, Pez. Uh, and this one is about, um, well, it's just about uh, feuding clubs. Uh, and do you want to read it from Rob? Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, buckle up. Buckle up. Um, boys! Although there is a very real threat that my 2023 cricket season may never actually happen because of the British rain, like any other tragic in their early 30s who hasn't given up on playing professional cricket despite never having, uh, despite never playing above club twos and being firmly trapped in a desk-based finance job, my attention has turned to the fixture list for the upcoming season. I play for the second 11 at my club and we managed to avoid relegation from the Premier League on the final day of the season, the same final day that a previous correspondent side rocked up with half a first team and kindly obliterated one of our relegation rivals (laughs) thanks to a seven from the one spinner. This this means that we renew some rivalries from last season when scrolling through the fixture list, which is the the game that stirs the loins the most. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, people talk about penciling in. Fix, like, yeah. have you ever done that in your life? Like, Never. got to fix your list for starters. Anytime after 1996. I used to hope that the closest, uh, our closest rivals, so to yeah. speak, and by rivals mean um, who, who was literally, who, whose home ground was closest to ours. Yeah. Um, I used to, like, hope that the, the away games were at, they the were closest away. games. Yeah. yeah. They were, well, no, yeah the correctly. closest yeah. grounds were, yeah, away, were games, away games. So you get yeah. more home games, you don't have to travel on tolls. Correct. <laughs> Saving money on petrol and tolls. <laughs> yeah. Which rivalry stirs the loins the most? <laughs> so I would have saved toll money. <laughs> I live near there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Another one for the 5K radio show. Right, here you beauty. <laughs> anyway, cultural differences. <laughs> Walk up to the ground and eat toast. <laughs> oh, yeah, I live around here. I live really close to you. <laughs> <laughs> Flopping Javianas with a fucking plug coming out. <laughs> um, <clears throat> uh, keep going Is it the money Yeah so stir, uh, stirs the loins the most Is it the money bags local clubs Stacked with first class cricketers That jelked themselves to oblivion <laughs> Ahead of an end of season game of slip catches With county pros and blokes from the squash club is it the other local rival that claims to have the biggest cult section outside of India? It is also renowned across the county, across all levels, for being full of dickheads. Or is it the club from Leafy Surrey who on field get into scraps? Their first team got into two on field fights last year, but off field they have the audacity to serve sushi for tea. <laughs> <laughs> no, the game I'm most looking forward to is one against the newly promoted sides who we haven't played against uh, since the COVID Cup, inverted commas, which was essentially a series of friendlies in 2020 and not in a competitive league game since 2019. Yep, that's right. On Saturday, 17 June, we will renew our rivalry with Dulwich. A relative nobody in the grand scheme of Surrey cricket. Hello, Dalich, if you're listening. <laughs> I was injured in the 2020 season, but took it upon myself to umpire the games. The ECB's COVID rules meant that every six overs, all players would have to sanitise their hands and the ball itself would have to be wiped. As umpires, we would take responsibility for sanitising the ball. However, in the first innings of the game against Dulwich on the last day of the season, they said after the first six overs, don't worry, we've got wipes in our pockets. We can wipe the ball. Their insistence of wiping the ball themselves was a bit strange, but I was happy to let them do it. Hmm. As the game continued, however, I noticed that everyone in their side was keen to throw the ball to the same guy at mid-off, who happened to be the same guy that had wiped the ball at the six-over mark. My suspicions raised, and watching every ball, I noticed him putting his hand in his pocket each time and then wiping the ball. While stood at square leg after the second sanitization break, where again they insisted on doing their own wiping, I got my phone out and Googled ball tampering. <laughs> <laughs> I had to be certain that this was actually against the laws of the game and not just against the spirit. Sure enough, the Wikipedia page for ball tampering confirmed that ball tampering includes the application of any artificial substance to the ball. Finally, fully empowered, between the overs I called over the Dulwich umpire for a discussion. Brackets, amusingly, despite ostensibly being your bog-standard old white man from Surrey, the Dulwich umpire went by the name of Ronaldo. <laughs> 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 it's already a spin-off series. Yeah, of course. Who is Ronaldo? Yeah. I told him what I believed to be going on and we called over the captain and the main suspect. They admitted straight away that they were using sanitary wipes to get moisture onto the ball and that all seemed to have been planned as a team, a la Sandpaper Gate. <laughs> the, the way you murdered Commas Sandpaper Gate. Debate then turned to whether our site should be awarded five penalty runs for their indiscretion, which I suggested given ball tampering had taken place. It's hard enough umpiring when you are clearly a member of the team, and I decided I had enough controversy for one day. I was talked down, brackets Alfred, given this wasn't a proper league game and the ball was fucked as it was. <laughs> 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 the biggest irony of this was that I had never seen a 13 overall ball look more fucked. <laughs> the Dulwich morons forgot that hand wipes contain alcohol and therefore they were actually just drying the ball out even more. <laughs> <laughs> None of them had moved the ball off gun barrel straight from my end. The game carried on largely as normal. That was until the second innings when the Dulwich, when Dulwich's Aussie batsman and last hope of winning the game nicked one to the keeper and stood his ground. Shock. But Ronaldo didn't raise his <laughs> finger. <laughs> The Aussies saw Dulwich home and the generosity displayed by us in a friendly had not been reciprocated by Dulwich. 
Before I get to my question, some additional context is required. I, re- I have returned from my 2020 injury with a vengeance. In each of the last two seasons, I have been the highest wicket taker in the twos and not had the barest sniff of getting a league game in the ones. My record alone at any other club should have at least got me in the conversation for a game in the ones. And to add to it, the first team captain is one of my best mates. Despite being an usher at the bloke's wedding. (laughs) (laughs) Despite being an usher at the bloke's wedding, the bloke managed to find an excuse after... Uh, sorry, managed to find excuse after excuse to not pick me. What the fuck is the point of being captain if you're not going to shoehorn your mates into the side? I would have had more chance of getting a game in the ones and probably could have done so with worse stats if I'd come in from another club mid-season. This one's rejection, my workmanlike style, <laughs> increasing age and seniority in my mild-mannered day job at a large accountancy firm <laughs> have all combined to make me that stereotypical gobby and bitter medium pacer that every league has. The Saturday becomes sort of Mr. Hyde release from the weekday Dr. Jekyll. (laughs) 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 And even the hint of a plain Mrs. Greeted with wild yelps and a few expletives. This has escalated to such an extent that one opposition captain, himself a total bellend, explained to our captain over some post-match beers that they compile a cunt 11 of opposition players each season and that they had chosen me to not only be in the cunt 11 but also to be captain of the cunt 11 <laughs> i.e i was the most obnoxious cunt in the league <laughs> <laughs> and so i come to my questions how one how do i approach the game when we renew our rivalry with dulwich given their approach to the spirit of the game previously do i double down on my reputation as captain of the cunt 11 and be a complete pest all game calling the opposition as many are uh, renowned uh, sorry calling the opposition as many renowned ball tamperers as possible and demand that my teammates refer to me as daryl hair all game <laughs> Or is it more alpha to be the bigger man and ensure that I and the rest of the team make no mention of this dull, thought-out act in a meaningless game three years ago, focusing purely on the cricket? Two, if I go for the cunt 11 approach, can you offer up some suggestions to call the opposition players? Bancroft, Steve Smith, Warner, Inzamam, Atherton, Faf Duplessis, other ones already up my sleeve. Three, why did my best mate refuse to pick me in the first team? Was he just wanting, was he just wanting to continually exert his superiority over me to deal with his own inferiority complex? Am I actually just shit at cricket? Is he really even my mate? And do my whole group of mates actually just not like me? <laughs> <laughs> now that he's given up the captaincy and been dropped to twos, should I spray him in front of the whole team every time he plays around a straight one or shells a dolly behind the stumps? Yours, Rob, because there is zero point at this stage in trying to <laughs> remain anonymous. <laughs> well, I'm, uh, not, I'm not sure if he actually wants me to uh, answer the question, but um, yes, you are shit at cricket, Rob. And uh, I'm not sure what sort of cachet this mate of yours had who was captain of the ones who's been dropped He's given mm. up the captaincy and then was dropped, so he must have been fucking terrible. Yeah, I, I, I mean, what do you want? To, what, what do we want to start here? I mean, okay, the, the incident itself, where where it all kind of kicked off, he's umpiring a a game of like um, faux league cricket happening during COVID. So, yeah. a couple of things are problematic here. Firstly. COVID's happening and you're not really allowed to get together, but a couple of nonces still want to play a game of cricket Mm. and like make it seem like a real game. Mm. Now this guy's injured, but takes it upon himself to umpire. Like, has he gone through a training course to umpire? That's what it seemed to me. Like he's gone, I can't play. Mm. I'm going to train to be an umpire. Mm. Uh, Blokes at his club going, fuck me. So he's still going to hang around. You know what I mean? The opposition. Terrible beer. Yeah. The opposition are like engaging in some kind of like um, misguided ball tampering for their own yeah uh like kicks or frivolity like there's a lot going on here that it's very uh the it's temptation very, very grim the temptation the ball tamper is such that like given they were literally allowed to apply substance to the ball yeah. they were like well let's just fucking take this to the extreme yeah, let's take okay. it all the way wet wipes right like this is yeah, what we're talking wet about wipes, wet yeah. wipes yeah I, like i've been um I've been in the orbit of wet wipes for the last five years Course, with a yeah. child like i know them well and i'm aware of um just how great they can be. You're not it's, slapping it's, them on a ball, are you? No. What are you putting them on a reader's ball for? Well, like, you know, like someone's got kids, so it's bringing along their wet wipes as well. Like, that, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and they're expensive. Like, but you, as a parent, like, engaging with wet wipes, like, you do marvel at the technology. It, it's the most, um, 
it's the most like luxurious, you know, usage of that particular, um, you know, act sure. that you could have. Like sure. you, you, you wish your whole life you could be using wet wipes, right? right okay. But we don't. We we use we use toilet paper. But for a child, you right. need to engage wet wipes if you can. If right. you're lucky enough to do that. Mm-hmm. So for me, it's like someone's gone like, you know what, this would, this would, we need to use this to sanitise the ball, but let's also double it as a um, ball tampering agent. I'll go actually give everyone a so wet wipe. go around corners. Why are you doing that? Well, I want to win this game. Why do you want to win this game? Well, it's it's the COVID Cup. It's, it's a the, friendly game. I yeah. don't want to win this game. And every, I'm going to give everybody, uh, I know it's just one guy's mainly doing it, but everyone, they said, we'll do it ourselves. He's every, the candy man. Yeah. Like I'm gonna give him. I'm going to give him uh, 50 wet wipes yeah. in his, in his, um, yeah. In his pocket, fifty wets, fifty wets. He's he he's brings it to the ground, and he's yeah. like, do it yeah. one by one. Yeah. Just, you just get a bunch of them. Yeah, you're at mid off there. Now we're gonna sling you the ball. Now just make sure you fucking get it on there because we're actually gonna get a bit of moisture yeah. on this. Well, in England, it's wet already. Yes, and we, we you're applying more moisture to the ball, which then dries it out because it's alcohol. Mm. And then you've got a scenario where it's just like a couple of nonces who think they're doing something cool in cricket yes, because they're right. bored. Fuck, you know, they should add this to the um. Like sociologists are going to have a field day with COVID. They already are for the next 20, 30, 50 years. Yeah. We're still learning about the impact that it had on us. This would be a good case study as well. Just like I'm coming back into cricket and I, I've got an idea, boys. <laughs> 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 I've got my wet wipes. We've got Jimmy at mid-off. Yeah. Anyway, and then the rest of it, I mean, it's so it's beautifully written, but, I mean, it, it, it you know, he's, he's coming across like uh, – He's 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 on the money with with his third point. Yeah. He's on the money. <laughs> That's all the time we've got for this week. It's a long one, uh, but uh, it all kicks off this week with the cricket, uh, with 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 the cricket matches that are being played. <laughs> And we're looking forward to that. If you want to get around TGC on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash great cricketer. And we'll see you guys on the internet soon. Cheers. 